Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I am your host, Chris Spangle. We Are Libertarians brings you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves. Think of us as the love child of National Review and Mad Magazine. We explain to you what the hell is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Please be sure to rate and review us in iTunes, like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, and support us through PayPal or Patreon at WeAreLibertarians.com. We are supported by listeners like you, so $1 per episode by pledging $5 a month helps us grow. We're always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wheellibertarians.com. If you're listening to the full show, then uh, we catch up for the first 20 minutes or so, then and it, then we get, we get full into it. It's a deep dive, analyzing current events and society from a libertarian perspective. This show is for adults by semi-adults, so please be warned, the language is sometimes strong and offensive. With me is my beautiful co-host, Greg Lenz. Greg, I've been upgraded to beautiful. Beautiful co-host, Greg. Uh, effervescent, my co-host. And then we brought uh, the two people bringing the show down. Yes, uh, we brought girls. Yeah, uh, these are our people that make us look pretty. Yes, yeah, so mm-hmm. we uh, we have uh, a, a staple of the show now is Kat Anagnos. Hello, yes. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, well, it wasn't really my choice. No, right. you put milk outside his door and you looked it up one night and haven't left. <laughs> I know. She, she was just basically like, hey, I'm coming to the podcast podcast thursday right yeah double finger yeah. guns oh god i was like i can't resist double finger guns no it was really like spangle i have nowhere to go tonight <laughs> please <laughs> please let me have friends i have none let me have a platform <laughs> oh god I will be famous. checks hair and mirror view yeah mm. uh and then also here is <laughs> hannah drazich oh the rare slip hannah wow. cook wow hannah cook, i called you by your maiden name. she's married now you're being marriage of she's been claimed I have been claimed. He put a ring on it. Yeah, that's a big ring, too. I know. He did a great job. Todd doesn't mess around. No. He's very alpha. Oh, gosh. He's so alpha. That sounded like you were sarcastic for our radio listeners. No, seriously. The most alpha man you'll ever meet. Sounds dirty. Other than Greg, you know. I don't know. I'm very beta. I I prepare (laughs) show notes for a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Uh, Have you met met Todd Cat? I don't no. think so. He's he, he's a nice, he's a great guy. He, Hannah, you dated your uh, your share of losers before Todd. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. They weren't all terrible. What would you, who was Really? The, I can think of a couple. Oh, <laughs> they were terrible. Not all of them. Who, who was the, who was the biggest loser? All right. So, somebody you never met. I dated him when I was in college. He's the reason why I never dated anybody my age ever again. Okay. He literally, like, everything he did or said had to be run by his mom. Oh, wow. One of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was a yep. libertarian. When we broke up, I told him that probably, actually. I told him <laughs> that I hoped he had a... T- with who? I broke up with him. Good, good. After his mom threw some fit of, of from of something from when I was at their house. And I told him that I hoped he had a terrible life. And I hung up the phone. <laughs> and I still, to this day, hope he's having a terrible life. Well... <laughs> Turn well, to the cheek. Uh, actually, yeah. at uh, Bible College, you missed it. Yes, <laughs> in the kitchen. I know. Who wants yeah. to? Jeez. Hold on. Well, let's let's just do Hannah's dating life. This will be great. Oh, I'm down. This will be so fun. Zero shame. Well, My husband and I not appreciate it. You know what's funny though is is just like how you sort of you know you were. I, I don't want to say that you you attracted or like you brought in Cat and Hannah like you just have this yeah. tendency to bring in strays and then you feed them and they never leave. Well, that's sort of the that's magic. Actually, what happened? That's well, that's sort of the magic <laughs> of we are libertarians, isn't it? I mean, people who have nowhere else to go end up here. I mean, we're we're here for the politically homeless, the outcast of society. We're uh, our own little island of misfit toys. E- exactly right. <laughs> You know, and, and Kat, you're no different than that. No, <laughs> I'm extremely misfit. That's a hell of an endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> Kat, you know, you're one of us. You big loser. <laughs> oh, sorry. I have never been sexually harassed at We Are Libertarians. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, now Kat... Uh, <laughs> that threw you. <laughs> I asked... I'm just thinking of all the legal ramifications. Mm. Uh, no, I asked Kat that because... She told me a story. Uh, she's an intern both here at We Are Libertarians and at the day job. So on Thursdays, we spend way too much time together. Almost a disgusting amount it of is. time. I'm yeah. always stunned that like there's no like cooling off period. A nice, like, a nice 12 the hours. The rest of the week. A nice, nice, <laughs> yeah. A nice 12 hour stretch of just cat. Mm-hmm. That Lots of cat. terrible. No, Honestly, you're oh. so lucky. <laughs> you rode all the way to D.C. with her for the Trump inauguration. No, 
I, yeah. they flew there. I drove there. But we did sleep in the same bed together. Yeah. One night, and then it was weird, so I slept on the floor. <laughs> <restaurant>. <laughs> you got put on the floor? She offered to sleep on the floor. Oh. Like, I, woke I can't up sleep with other people. I have intimacy issues, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to cuddle. <laughs> yeah, I got real weird. And Hannah's a sleep sweater. <laughs> Ridiculous. Actually, um, the puddles you would not believe. Yeah. Did you wet? No, I just I was watching cops. <laughs> uh, now I I bring that up because Hannah uh, uh, cat dropped a little factoid. Uh-oh. She's dropped many factoids about the life that is cat uh, that have been amazing this week. But <laughs> she was telling me about her one of her past boyfriends that she mm-hmm. dated speaking of dating lives um also side note if at any time you see a little metal hand <laughs> scratch me take uh, my good hand <laughs> i found a scratcher in the coffee table anyways so oh, and you yeah. were brushing your hair with it earlier right yeah. that, i forgot my brush in the car in, in a pelvic <laughs> region in the car which is right outside right yeah it's a, cra- Just didn't it's feel a like crab comb <laughs> right right no um yeah so fun fact I've dated many a losers in my life, but uh, one of the most life, right, one of the most <laughs> successful kids I ever dated. Um, I cannot say his name, but God bless you, dear leader. Thank you. <laughs> but um, so seventh grade, we had <laughs> to oh in seventh God. grade. Hey, we were serious. It was honestly She's really very sheltered. It yes. was a beautiful, she did beautiful bring romance. Amish blueberry bread. It's one of the most Delicious. successful men she's ever dated. Exactly. <laughs> so seventh grade, um, we were doing a unit on the Holocaust in English class. Mm-hmm. So we watched uh, Schindler's fiction. List, right, which um, was very alarming and disturbing for seventh graders. Mm-hmm. But then we <laughs> each had to make a project that went along with the unit we were studying. So I wrote a song to the hit Bon Jovi's Live. Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, Living good. Living on a Prayer. Woo! If I got that We're wrong, that'd be awkward. There. Right. So I wrote a song about the Holocaust to that tune. <laughs> well, my... <laughs> a, man, a woman after Greg's own heart. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, my boyfriend at the time made mustard gas and brought it to the school <laughs> <laughs> and had kids sniff it in the parking lot. For real? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. He, he waged germ <laughs> warfare on his classmates Chemical. in seventh grade? Chemical. Chemical warfare. Yeah. <laughs> and like this is a real story true story what happened Did they uh, call the, cops? the sad thing is no <laughs> the teacher it's just a little mustard gas <laughs> yeah. even the, hitler didn't use chemical weapons well we right. told our science teacher hey so and so has mustard gas and is like showing it off in the parking lot and making kids smell it for quarters and the teacher was <laughs> <For> like <quarters? laughs> That's capitalism in my yeah. and the teacher was like what like, nerve damage kind of like brought him aside and was like so and so, is it true? And he was like, "Yeah, I guess." Ah, shucks, you caught me. And then that was that. <laughs> like it was one. Where did you go? Well, you're so young. You Al-Kar- had the internet, but where do you go to learn about mustard gas? This to kid make was it? crazy. Dude, we had we had those kids in our class. Did we? Yes. Oh yeah, we I had, didn't. You, My neighbors and I would make well, pipe bombs. You were <laughs> <old school. laughs> yeah. Yes, but you were trying to gas yourself to get out of the misery that was no friends. Prom Those wool mom. skirts in the winter that were just so itchy. <laughs> Sadly, it's all true. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, you should see we her made pipe bombs. She has on right now. <laughs> <laughs> we made pipe bombs on the internet. Yeah, you can find that. Cat today, what did you? She said, "Don't you ever find people so douchey that if you just looked at them, you go, they're just douches. I want to go blow their headquarters up." <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> is ISIS recruiting you? Well, if you see a pamphlet in my backpack, it's <laughs> for research. I feel a little bit like I'm a little upset because you once took an Instagram picture of you in all black with a black baseball hat on sitting on Ball State stairs. <laughs> and I wrote, hey, a nice Columbine outfit. Don't go to school tomorrow, fam. And you deleted it yeah. and like blocked me. I didn't. One, I didn't block you. I encouraged it privately. Two, there's um, two cats. There's public and private. There is. Right. She's, no, she's twenty, so there's still that. You know, that was at the time when I was heavily involved in student government. I mm-hmm. was the chief of staff, so I had to be um, assistant to the very, assistant president. Right. No, assistant to the president. Well, basically, <laughs> I was the president. No, I'm kidding. I was you the look second. At, look at me. I, am, <laughs> yeah, I have president. mustard gas. I am president yeah. now. I, am, I know a guy. I own everything. <laughs> no, but uh, I was the president's go-to. So uh, I thought I had a political future at Ball State, and then I took this internship and now i encourage those comments yeah well yeah i mean everybody loves mustard gas and you can right. blame that on us the smell incredible it smells like hobby lobby no <laughs> I, so it smells like hating so gays mm. smells like a night in a hotel room with her sister hey Ooh. that's true because that's, that's how harsh. you two met was through chloe and agnos who used yes. to come on and then you know stopped right yeah right i Doesn't, still love chloe i, I oh, still yeah. love Chloe too. yeah of course I she just doesn't love us back it's unrequited <laughs> she loves me back 
I don't know about you all. She kind of likes me. Now, uh, what was the trip? What? So you went to the inaugural for Trump? Why? Because why not? Hannah's the, our scum, one of our scumbag Republicans, I'm along not, with Rob mm, Kendall. I didn't vote for Trump. Who'd you vote for? That's nobody's business. Oh, she well, voted surprise! For no, Mitt Romney. No, she voted in for Hillary In the kitchen, Clinton. we have your voting records. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. Are you really? No. Are you, that's right, So you never were on the Trump train. But then, Greg knows who yeah, I voted for. I know who you voted for. I feel like I know who you voted Darryl for. Daryl Castle. <laughs> Greg and I had a very... I was very undecided, honestly, going into the election booth. I Being was, the like, good messaging I was. him. <laughs> she was, was one of those who voted for Harambe. <laughs> I, I did. Penciled it's the true. name. Just kidding. I would have. Uh, I was literally messaging Greg like the morning that I, of the election day. I was like, I literally have no idea who to vote for right now. Like, I have no clue. And going back to like my days of working presidential politics, like I thought an independent voter and an undecided voter was a non-existent thing. I was like, no, there's really nobody. Like everybody has their mind made up. I don't know if it's just this election or if it's me or what, but I. It was definitely had this no election. Like, like there were no, so many people no that were Mitt. Like you idea. were a huge Mitt fan, and I the fact of having mm. pulling the lever for Donald Trump when you worked for Mitt is uh, makes you want to vomit. Yeah, because Mitt Romney. Mormon. Great. Mm -hmm. I'm and obsessed Mormon. with Mormons. You're Mormon. Oh. She is. Oh, me and the Mitt Romney, mm. the Romney boys. She's very mm. obsessed with Mormons. I love Mormon. Mor I love Mormons. They're I follow, very good people. No, I follow all of these like Mormon family vloggers on YouTube. And Do you I watch, watch their that daily TV lives. show, like the like the reality Sister Wives? Oh, I Sister Wives. Yeah, I watch that. Love should be multiplied, not divided. You watch <laughs> a lot of Mormon porn. Yeah. So I told a joke at the office at the day job that I like Mormon porn. Quote unquote and, joke. And everybody thinks I'm serious. Well. Because she said it's so, she's it was one of those joking, Flat affect, not joking. Yeah. yeah, no, it definitely was a joke. I have a magic underpants fetish. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to sit and watch two Mormons grind on each I other. Have binders full of women. Yes, that would be a great porn. You just open up your binders and out pops magic underpants women. <laughs> no, I was thinking like actual women like laying down with like giant plastic sheets on them to like pretend to be a binder. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Anyways, we are we, we went listening. to the inauguration together. Yeah, ah, we did. Road tr about. Yeah, you did a road. You drove. You drove I alone. Drove. I drove alone. I left. Bless um, you, dear leader. I left whatever morning, Thursday morning at like two a.m. and drove by myself. Oh my god, that was the best time to drive. I made such good time. And then you met them there. I met them there, and we had a long day. I took Cat everywhere on Capitol. She never been. Well, yeah. I didn't know Cat. I didn't know Cat was going either. I had. Well, I wasn't going to. I wasn't going until like the week of. Yeah. My sister asked me if I wanted to go, and I had never flown on an airplane, and I'd never been to DC, so it was two first times. Um, I thought that the plane was going down. <laughs> Both times we <laughs> I've went. I've seen this movie. <laughs> I've seen that movie. Is that a tower? <laughs> Probably. Um, but uh, yeah, it was awesome it was a crazy time. experience it was really then you went good. to an inaugural ball right yes Who, which one do you remember which one it was the freedom oh, ball freedom ball, freedom yeah. ball. Yeah. <laughs> both both sisters wore my dresses yeah to the ball that's a cool True fact, story Bender. Wow. Yeah. Very well, right. and it was That's funny. That's why I invited you. <laughs> could you <laughs> hey, don't forget those long. dresses. Hannah, could you drive 10 hours That's and bring those dresses? We'd love to have you. Basically what happened. I even <laughs> met them before they flew and took all of their clothes with in my car. Because we didn't want to like check like dresses because they get ruined. And Kyle's uh, tux and yeah. all of that. Yeah. But it was so you basically were the butler. She I really. Was the, yeah. She was the help. Yeah, <laughs> she was the help. Like we'll he meet you there, good. friend. He Don't worry though, you can sleep also, alone in the bed. I also had all the snacks. <laughs> she really did. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> well, Mama Maybell. So this she trip, called me mom. She, I did. Yeah. Well, this trip was funny because <laughs> I, I wasn't a Trump fan either, but I just went because whatever. It's like a you cool go cause just for the experience. Well, it was crazy. Um, I thought I'm not even kidding. I thought we were gonna get like. I thought a terrorist attack would me happen for too. sure. Remember the cannon? I was just about to yes. say after he like was right after he, he was sworn in, like became they president. Yeah, became whatever they. I they don't know shot these off things. Cannons. Like he said, what's the last? Like help, so help me God or whatever yeah. the last. And, and they shot off cannons. And we all were like, ah! there's like a scream because everyone was like ducking. Yeah, they should have like warned us. It was terrible. There was literally like people were ducking. And then at people one point we, die. we left the parade and we were walking back and they all were like, oh, let's stop at this subway and eat. And I was like, can't we just go on the subway and like, is that what the Metro? Sorry. Metro. Can't, I was like, can't we just go on the Metro back to the place we're staying and then eat? And you were that scared? No, no. It, I wasn't scared. I just, for some reason said this, thank God, because we get to the actual subway we were eating at and we turn on the TV there and there's my husband called me. He was like, are you guys okay? And I was like, yeah, we're fine. There are these like the people dressed in all black with these like Antifa. radical 
they're called like block or something and they they were taking baseball bats like breaking all the subway windows well, the starbucks we were walking that starbucks that they broke out all the windows mm-hmm. we walked right by that is like, that on k street yeah. i think so yeah yeah but they had shut down roads already protesting as we were leaving. oh yeah i mean richard it spencer got punched in the face crazy. yeah yeah it was pretty fun it was, wild. it was really exciting it was it, probably the it most was universally thing. well received well even when we went to the inaugural ball and standing in line for security there were like we were in line. There was a row of police in, um, like, riot gear, and then there were protesters on the Oh, other yeah. Side. I mean, riot gear were everywhere. Yeah, it was crazy. I've never... And, like, people they love had, Trump. They threw stuff at people. Not us, but they were throwing stuff at people in We line. were too pretty. But <laughs> 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 we had a good time. It was great. It was the best time Yeah, ever. honestly, it was a really good trip, and it was in the middle of the school, like, just the semester for me. Yeah, you missed, me. like, a class or a test, right? Yeah, um, that's why I failed that class. So Which was it? <laughs> So uh, journalism 103. You nice. can only get three. As a journalism s- major? Right. So that's why I switched. Um, <laughs> Not important. No. You can only get three skips, and I used all three for the inauguration. And I guess he made some, like, really shitty comment to everyone, like, wow, so soon to use up all your skips, and then I failed the class. But oh. honestly. Destined, no. for, destined for broadcasting. Destined for it. But yeah. honestly. You no, know, I'd like to check out communications. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit easier. But I don't know. I mean, that's true. If i thinking in 10 years, I'm like, wow, I really wish I would have passed that class or Wow, can't believe I went to the inauguration. Yeah, easy so, choice. Yeah, the Very class. Fair. No. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, before we move on, I want to talk a little bit about our great sponsors for this episode. Our, our first sponsor is our great friends at 812 Farms. It is a two-acre commercial hop farm providing breweries and home brewers with fresh hops, whole cone hops, and hop pellets. They are opening a 250-seat wedding event venue right on the farm in beautiful Bartholomew County in Columbus, Indiana. And they just acquired a complete brewing system to open up their own restaurant and brewery. And they're striving to be Indiana's first destination brewery with ingredients that will be grown on site or within a 30-mile radius. So uh, this episode or the next episode is, I think, our last uh, read for these guys. Um, you guys have been so great to 812 Farms. We want to continue to have them back. So we really need you guys go like their Facebook page. We wanted to go down and do a show from there. Absolutely. And we still will. I, I gave them my word. So we'll go down there and do one. We should drink their beer. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and so they're starting to expand and we want you to help them expand as they have partnered with us as we grow. We are libertarians. We want you to help grow their uh, their farm, 812 Farms on Facebook. It's all the words, not the numbers. Uh, another sponsor that is starting a new business that is looking to to partner with us, which means, as we have discussed so many times, Greg, I am mm-hmm. the listeners, the listeners are me. One and the same. We are one and the same. And so when, when martinarmory.com comes to partner with We Are Libertarians, they are saying to all of you, uh, we want to partner with you and give you a great deal. And they're founded on a simple goal, which is to make buying a gun simple and affordable. So instead of carrying thousands of different guns, martinarmory.com carries only 25. This allows them to focus on providing the most popular guns on the market at insanely cheap prices. And for a limited time, their prices are getting even crazier, Greg. Crazy. Uh, They are offering our listeners uh, free shipping. So please go to martinarmory.com and use the code WEARLIBERTARIANS when you check out. Again, simply go to martinarmory.com, pick an awesome gun, and enter the promo code We Are Libertarians. Again, that's martinarmory.com, and enter the promo code We Are Libertarians. We thank both of these two uh, small businesses for starting out. I, I am the son of a small business owner. I hope to be a small business owner at some point. And it's very, very important that you, as We Are Libertarians listeners, support small business owners, fellow libertarians, and uh, our great sponsors in 812 Farms. And the and podcasting Martin, industry in and the general. Po- and martinarmory.com, of course. So thank you so much to those guys for being sponsors of We Are Libertarians. We have a lot to get to on this episode of We Are Libertarians. <laughs> the irony of what the first topic was going to be and our newest sponsor sort of occurred to me while you were reading the... Uh, I, listen, you don't have to always point this, th- this stuff out. I had to edit out... Uh, Greg, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> you, no, we can't get into it because I had to edit it out. All right, I'll try not to get it edited out again. Um, so we're going to talk about the uh, the, the shootings that happened in Washington D.C. around the Republicans. Greg, uh, I I want to have a, a discussion with you. What did I do wrong? Uh, you didn't do anything wrong. Okay, good. Um, I'm not mad. 
Uh-oh. I am owed an apology. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, can, can I do like a general writ, like a blanket apology for everything yeah. I've ever done wrong? No, I, I personally don't uh, believe in publishing the name of these shooters. Oh. And uh, and I just, I'm not a fan of that. And I, I based on reading your great article that you wrote at WeAreLibertarians.com, which I highly, what was the title of it? Oh, please hide, please hide this post, how uh, mass customization is driving mass casualty. Yeah, which we will talk about because it was a great article. You you used his name a lot. So I imagine that you are of the opposite mind of me. So I want Honestly, to- it didn't occur. I was just like literally trying to report it. Sure. Like, you know, just as the fact listing. Yeah, and so I... I, I, I Sorry think about it's, that. I, no, I'm, I'm not didn't mad. think about that. It's fine. I, it, listen, you do whatever you... What you think is best. Um, I just tend to think that... Yeah, you're right. Because I, I feel the same way. I just wasn't thinking about it when I did it. I was yeah, just trying to get something up for us. Uh, it's not that... It's it To me, the person that was the shooter, you, you can have a discussion without making their name famous about the person. Um, and I know that other people may feel differently in that, it, listen, it's a fact in the case, and so report the fact. Um, but at the same time, I just don't, you know, I think you saw, um, I mean, and Kat can attest to this, you know, you see the Columbine shooters being uh, <laughs> memorialized in both dress and uh, and on 4chan. Um, Are these good Not kids? sure what that had to do with me, but... Uh. <laughs> Black... We we also the trench coat. I, I should True. say before I get too far off topic, uh, we are doing video now, um, and so we are upgrading our YouTube channel, and we're posting these videos on the Facebook if you want to share the video of it. And mittens plays a prominent role. It looks very the the great look of the We Are Libertarian Studios that and, and the cameras and the <laughs> lights that we've got. And it looks professional, and then all of a sudden Mittens gets up on the table and starts hanging out. So the Roman cat. Yep. So check out Mittens. Uh, she's very cute. Um, <laughs> but I, I, how you are just some sort <laughs> Sorry, of salty. Sorry, dear leader. Let me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Take that. Yes. Uh, so I would prefer not to say his name and that is why I don't want to say his name is that I just don't want to memorialize that name because I just don't feel like the name is important I do think that talking about him and his motives are uh, because I think there's a d- big discussion around this guy that is just uh, man whenever something like this happens the cliches that get brought Fly. out it just is so annoying and I wish that we had some sort of hide cliche button on this stuff because I can't imagine you know little cat anagnos on your college feed with all your sorority sisters what is your facebook feed like well first of all going real quick back to your you not wanting to memorialize the person i mean right. it's just like with the boston marathon bombers um there was that online campaign for the one who's still alive mm-hmm. to let him go because he was like hot sarnev yeah because he was hot because he had nice hair so it just shows. Well, that's like the women who have boyfriends in prison. Yeah, I right. mean, uh, Charlie Manson has two wives right now. Right, it's right. It's the swastika in the middle of the forehead. But uh, it's no, chick crack. Sexy. It's, woo. <laughs> what are you doing? I got Party excited foul. when I said swastika. <laughs> Spilled your drink. I was trying to hail, and then it just shot out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my social media feeds are just insane right now. It's a lot of very young, bleeding liberal people, which whatever but they're not recognized it's funny okay for example the manchester bombing i noticed you see the top comments and all those news stories can we just forget about the violence of it and just really focus on or can we just forget about the politics of this and can we really focus on the violence that happened and just you know not politicize it immediately right but yet this one when the republicans are saying that they're like well the silver lining here is this is what they deserve if they support guns having more guns was there that was it that blatant oh yeah i was i kid you not i was on facebook and one person i'm friends with um was like all about it and was like this is awesome and everybody was commenting no they did wish so-and-so died yeah wow could you not they're but they're actual socialists like not yeah. exaggerating they really are socialists yeah like they read marx and tell everybody how stupid they are and oh yeah talk about ideological superstructures for sure and mm. they're all saying wow this is so great that this happened these scumbags need to die oh. they're killing yeah. people like they're the ones who they kill more people than the massacre did or i the mean almost it's, massacre let's did. be honest it's, it's not that much different than if you were to go on a lot of anarcho anarcho capitalist libertarian feeds yeah right the ones 
some of them are real angry. You yeah. Know? I haven't seen that too much. I mean, most people have been pretty civil that I've encountered, but yeah. you know, that's probably just the nature of being older. Like, because I'm sure being college age students are it's having ridiculous. a field day. Like, oh look, some it's Republicans just, got shot. Uh, this is like the cry-ins at the election. Right. Well, and that's just like I said. It just shows. <laughs> I'm well, literally shaking. <laughs> whenever something happens, like. You know, like the Manchester thing, like we were like, everyone's like, can we stop politicizing it? But this, they're like, oh, hell yeah, like that's great. That's a Republican. Good. You know, you're a white male. What did the those Republican people say? Killed when it, by a, or shot by a Bernie Yeah, supporter. what did they say when it came out that he Two was seconds. a Bernie bro? Yeah. They were all saying, oh, that's not been. That's not, how does that apply? Yeah, how does that apply? That's not that, applicable. Yeah, that doesn't have anything to do. Bernie so Sanders what? came out and said a statement that he condemns any kind of violence. You can't blame this on Bernie. Well, and they, Echoes. Oh, well, and they say um, it's just like, you know, not all Muslims are bad. Yeah. Just like just like there's the one ISIS. Of course, there's the one ISIS. <laughs> there's the one ISIS. <laughs> the one ISIS. But the one true ISIS. Yes. It's just ridiculous. And it's funny. After I... Um, when I posted a video of myself on the podcast talking about the whole, um, what was it, Evergreen State? Evergreen State. Evergreen College. State. Mm -hmm. I had some people DM me who were like, hey, girl, just wondering, what did you mean by people are paying real taxes? Because I'm in college and I'm paying real taxes. So I don't know what fake taxes. And I, again, I said, oh, I misspoke, I guess. I meant a lot, like, Your fair taxes share. off of, like, an actual, like, income. <laughs> income i guess but they're and like not i work a full-time job at, at hot topic no 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 i mean <laughs> like a full-time 40-hour career. career whatever yeah so not uh, you're spending money while you go get drunk and lay out by the pool well, so yeah. right. don't you you essentially make no taxes if you're making under a certain amount because yeah. like a hot topic job you're not you you get refunds that's why you get refunds is you're getting well that these money people back. have you get refunds you hey, get state you know, federally subsidized student loans well i was the cost they let me know very sternly that they <laughs> have worked a full-time job they support themselves they their parents don't pay their college um they're not supported like I am, although I don't know how they know what my financial system uh, situation is. They just assume because you're white. Right, right. And so, Greek um, and that you guys have all the money. Right. Um, I just think it's hilarious that those, I see that those types of people, it's just they go from one oh, crisis zero to, to another. Oh, yeah. One crisis to another. They are always outraged, like perpetually always. outraged. I always, I think that like, you know. The liberals are all just like horny for boycotts. Like they absolutely <laughs> masturbate to boycotts. Like I said, what can we boycott? What can we shame somebody? Like I said a few name? episodes ago, it's they. We we've grown up in all the history books, learning about different revolutions and protests, and we haven't had anything outrageous happen. No. So they are creating their own. Yeah, they're like yeah, astroturfing outrage. Right. So I feel like in thirty years or now, when my kids are, well, I don't know how math whatever but when my kids someday are communications looking, <laughs> communications failed math. journalism when they're um like looking at history they're like wow mom i can't believe you were alive when horrible republicans were around bleh you know what i mean yeah i just feel like that's gonna happen i feel like mom you were racist mom are you racist was the r for racism mom, you're xena transphobic meta islamophobic xyz if you I don't raise know. children like that <laughs> I'll personally smack you in the face. Yeah, you know, I will. Uh, Hannah will homeschool the shit out of you. <laughs> I'll do it. I feel like your kids, based on Mama and Agnos, will be very conservative. Well, I don't know. Hopefully, you think so? No, uh, I don't. It's know. usually like a reaction to it. Like if whatever you were raised, like around you know the rebellion er period, you're like. No way. I feel like this next generation, like over the next few years, we're going to see a lot a lot of millennials, especially, are going to be far more conservative than we think. Right. Fiscally, for sure. Yeah, they're for sure. Because we're screwed over. <laughs> yeah. As an old, as the middle of the road, like, lib m wow, millennial. I was born basically in the middle of that. We are so freaking yeah. screwed over. Well, it's like we're going to pay Social Security, but we're not going to get it. No, yeah. exactly. And we pay so much in taxes. I'm married to a small business owner. It's ridiculous the amount of taxes he pays. It's like, it's, it's always done. a fee or an additional, you know, always something. Yeah. It's so Well, and I just find that interesting that my parents are fairly conservative, but they never started. <laughs> Your mom's woke. Fairly. Your mom's conservative well, isn't close. A little bit, a little she bit. She could have replaced Alex Jones You're on the Megyn Kelly probably. interview. Your mom is Pepe incarnate. Yeah. <laughs> she is. But I just think, it, well, she never got like that until the 2012 election. 2012? Yeah, 2012 election. What was the 2012 one? Why? Mitt Romney. Oh, God. Mittens. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mitten. Mittens and tag and toad as kids. <laughs> right. Toad. But uh, I just find it interesting that like my sister and I never rebelled or never had that need to you rebel. You will, eventually. Politically. I think this is my rebellion. Yeah. You're libertarian. She said fuck on the internet. 
I did, well, and then we deleted it five minutes after. <laughs> yeah, you are very like you are very. Um, you don't like it when anyone else comments and says something bad. You are the only one allowed to say yeah. offensive things. Well, that was when I was scared about my image, and now I don't give a shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> would you all like to explain what she did for a good ten minutes before we started, Hannah? Hannah, you know what to do. Basic white know. girl, the shit out of her. Hard, hard best. Hair flip. She was she hair flip she's shamer. Her, she's just getting her hair ready. Well, it's Guys. been gross all, all day. over me like that. Well, here's you don't the understand. Pro- my friends wow, watch this. Great. I know. My hair smells like amazing. lemon and blueberry Amish Ooh. bread. Well, here's no, the does. problem. That my mom great. will always it. say, like, she'll see. My mom is like really controlling about fashion because she thinks that I like wow. look terrible all the time and I'm lazy. See what I mean? And so <laughs> she tells you that you look terrible all the time. And well, she's you. just is always like, why don't you dress cute? I buy you so many cute clothes and you never, you're not Chloe. You just, well, exactly. And she's like, you just wear a t-shirt and jeans and you just sure. need to wear, what about a nice dress? And I wore a dress with Converse and she freaked out, <laughs> freaked out. And so she, I'm afraid that she'll see these and she'll be like, your hair was sticking up at one point and it was not brushed at this one bottom half and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm just looking out. Uh, the, the the eternal voice of the parent in our heads. The mothering, yeah. like oh, Hannah does to like you. That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hannah Hannah's both protective <laughs> and awful. <laughs> Why are you I doing this? Teach. You need to do it this way. You need to do it this way. What? I don't do that. You know, you're trying to guide Chris, <laughs> young Chris, to make better decisions. <laughs> well, because he was making some pretty terrible decisions when it came to dating. I mean, they seemed pretty good at the time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> can we all agree they were pretty terrible? Uh, yeah, not looking back, all but, right. you know, when... Uh, in the midst of it. In the midst. It <laughs> yeah. was great. It was great. Anyways, thank you for listening to... Making terrible... De- <laughs> t- taking, <laughs> making terrible decisions. Meanwhile, she's microwaving butter in foil. No kidding. Did That's you not... That fire. didn't occur to you? No, I've done it before, and it's never been caught on fire. <laughs> I have all this bread. I need some butter with it. Yeah. <laughs> I do. She's that like, was over here She Snapchats about hair and, like, only things food. from the gym, and then when she's not <laughs> Snapchatting, it's like, does anyone have any dry bread I can just roll into a ball and put in my mouth? <laughs> does anybody have any carbs? I um, love carbs. Carbs are my friend. The point is you put <laughs> aluminum foil uh, uh, in a microwave. wrapped butter in the microwave. You can put certain amounts of foil in the microwave and it's fine. Uh, no, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you Did cannot. you miss this day at homeschool? <laughs> <laughs> my microwave has a metal tray that goes in it. This sounds like one of those special microwaves. That's that the a wood fire oven, and that is not a <laughs> no, microwave. No, I think that's a microwave no, oven. You Amish are all the same. To God, there's a metal rack. In my microwave that came with my microwave that's a microwave in there. oven. It's a microwave oven. No, it's a microwave. No, you have a microwave oven. No, no, it's no. a microwave oven. Are you cutting costs? Is it because you're homeschooling? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we've gone totally organic. Right, this bread is delicious. Speaking, if you see people, um, I've never seen anyone like good. just literally peel off pieces of bread and shove them in their mouth. Wow. Like without a, a knife. Have you never, oh yeah. Like she's literally disgusting. like taking chunks out There's of bread. There's napkins here, weirdo. Oh, I didn't see them. No, I brought a <laughs> delicious, <laughs> delicious lemon and blueberry bread from. Yes, an thank Amish you for bakery. bringing it for everybody. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, for I everyone. Provide, I provide sustenance. Sustenance for you guys. I care mom. about your well-being. She laughed about that all day l- last Friday. She's that like, was so funny. Greg was so uh, Greg was so funny when he said that dear leader gives me sustenance. Sustenance. That's not she how I talk. Me sust- she has a lisp. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's jump <laughs> let's jump into our first story. Uh, yesterday, a 66-year-old man from Illinois walked onto a baseball diamond in northern Virginia and shot House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. Four others, including a congressional staffer, a lobbyist who was a coach for the team. He was a former ba- uh, staffer. staffer and uh, college baseball player. And two members of the Capitol Police who were also wounded in the attack. On Wednesday morning, he single opened fire on a practice sh- session. Should we just say the shooter? Is that what you want to do? The That's shooter, fine with me. Yeah. The shooter. The shooter single opened fire on a, and, and again, to reiterate, we just don't want to make that name famous. We yeah. can talk about him without without actually giving his uh, name any kind of honor. Right. Um, <clears throat> single opened fire on a practice session, congressional Republicans for their annual charity congressional baseball game against congressional Democrats. And this raises... Several hundred thousand dollars for local boys and girls charities. Yeah. So it's the, all the people go. Oh well, they should have been at work. They shouldn't have been playing baseball. It's like <laughs> they're human beings. They're allowed to have lives, and they're raising money for charity. Yeah. Which is, but if Obama does bi- it, then it's bipartisan. So exactly. Everybody just chill. They right. were the Democrats were at practice too. That's yeah. the thing. And then they all got called in. Their coach called them in, saying, "Hey, we got to get you all together and get you a secure." Breaking right. news, everybody. The Democrats and Republicans don't all hate each other. Right. Uh, well. 
I hate some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like yeah. all war. No, all the, I mean, time. this like, is what this and this is a tradition. Time. Like it's one of the great right. traditions of bipartisanship. Everybody knows this happens, so I don't know why this is late breaking news. Because it's something to get Republicans it's, shame Republicans. It's something to bitch about. Yeah, it's really exactly. What it is. Like it, it, I posted a status of basically saying that the one of the most controversial, if not the most controversial, opinion in America today is that politicians are human beings and deserve dignity and respect. And uh, <gasps> I know. And you would have thought that you should have seen the libertarian response to that. Oh, boy. And uh, let me just say, I, I firmly believe that Statist. that if we started to recognize politicians as human beings, then they would change as much as we would change in our public discourse. And I saw an MSNBC reporter on Chris Matthews last night, uh, Hardball with Chris Matthews, that's his name. Uh, and she was just saying, you know, this is the first time I've ever been on the Hill. So somebody who is the NBC congressional reporter has been there for a while. She goes, this is the first time that I've been on the Hill where everybody is being a human being first and a, and a member of Congress second. At politics are taking a second place uh, to, to being a human being to each other. And everybody's getting along and this has changed a lot of things. And that, that's really when I realized, you know what, we, we and our expectation of politicians are that our team is supposed to hate the other team because the other team are not human beings. They're not people. They're literally people. Eric Trump literally said that on Fox last week. What did he say? He said Democrats aren't, I don't even think of them as people anymore. Right. And I mean, he says that, and like, that's the toxic, toxic environment. That's, that's what everybody's talking about. And I think that every listener of this audience, including all of our hosts and including me, have to sit and think about to, to what extent do we dehumanize the people who share different opinions than us? Not only in uh, not only in the people that we go to battle with on on Facebook uh, rants or on comments, but also in how we talk about politicians and how we talk about these people. You know, the, one of the I, I think I would encourage everybody. I wish I had the audio teed up here of Joe Barton talking about his son, Congressman Joe Barton's two sons were there, and uh, he talked about how his young son was born and. Uh, he was given several gifts at that time from congressional Democrats, and he he often comes up to visit Capitol Hill, and you know he he comes over, he hugs all the Republicans, and then he immediately makes a beeline for several members of Congress who are like uncles to him, including the former uh, Congressman John Dingell. Um, he he says that his son is bipartisanship. That he is It's just, not politics first. It's it's that he's just seeing human beings that he's responding to and that it is uh it has been hard for his son, who is younger and below ten, I believe, to understand why anybody would want to come and just try and murder his friends. And I don't think that we as Americans have to um hate each other and demonize each other and dehumanize each other to to win at the game of ideas, and unfortunately, we're heading that direction. Um, that's the direction that, uh, unfortunately, I think we're on that permanent collision course. I think Trump, Trumpian politics are here to stay, even if Donald Trump, let's say Donald Trump, um, gets impeached or Donald Trump doesn't win re-election, and we get a Democrat in the office. Everything that the Democrats are doing, they're setting a template. The Republicans set a template with Bill Clinton, which, George w. Bush. which followed the Democrats to counter serve under Bush. Then the Republicans counterserved all that. And if now, it hadn't been for 9-11, it would have been so nasty and toxic. Like, that yeah. staved off a lot of this. Yeah, and uh, I, I hope, I think a lot of the statuses that I see, uh, along with so many cliches about guns, which we'll get into, in all of this, are just that, this, well, I hope that this changes the other people. I hope that this changes the discourse of them, the politicians, or this makes the left get their act together, or... This will make the uh, politicians realize that they're all violent extremists bringing violent force against us, which we do not disagree with. Government is force. Government is, is the force of a gun f demanding that you do something. And it's easier to accept because you're just you know, giving it to somebody else on your behalf. But that doesn't mean that in a counter, uh, in a counter strike, you can all of a sudden start shooting people on a baseball diamond. <laughs> So I, over I, tax cuts, right? I mean, it, it is it is uh, it, it is not the radical left that created the sixty six year old man to go out and shoot people. It's mental illness, and the fact that we are sitting here talking about guns, we're sitting here talking about the behavior of Donald Trump and congressional Republicans and congressional Democrats, or them. 
that's all bullshit. The fact is that this man it will likely be ruled as somebody who is crazy if if they were ever to get to the the full bottom of the story. Every other mass shooter has just been nuts, and he is taking out his psychosis within the realm of politics as opposed to his school, you know. And uh, it, it is it is unfair to blame Bernie Sanders. And uh, I, I just, I just. It's unfair to blame Republicans for not supporting tougher gun law. I mean, the guys from Illinois. Absolutely. He bought the guns legally, completely. Right. Which is hard to do in Illinois. Right. right. They don't right. like in Chicago. You, <laughs> they don't give those theoretically. Away you there. can't get them right. unless you're a criminal. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I just, uh, I'm just sickened by so many of the cliches and everybody missing the point. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is a time when we all can sit and reflect and go, how are my words? contributing to a toxic political environment um you know, i don't know that i want to do that i know i know we're the mean boys of liberty but at the same time uh i think one of the founding principles of we are libertarians is that we must recognize the humanity of every person that exists and you cannot be a libertarian without valuing each individual human being and if you as a libertarian are not doing that over politicians then you are not being libertarian. Yeah, it's hypocritical. You have to understand that these are human beings with emotions and feelings, and when you can then try to empathize with them, well, they don't empathize with us. Well, have you... Where do you think that ends? uh, Hannah's a a, a Christian that's married. You've read the... Have you heard of The Love Dare? Yeah, of course. (laughs) What's The Love Dare? The Love Dare is like... It's this Kurt Cameron movie where basically he's in he's getting divorced and things are just <gasps> on the rocks. I know. Yeah. Kurt Cameron getting divorced. Is there's bad. there's <laughs> a crisis. Yes. And he just cannot figure it's called, out. Called uh, what's the actual movie called? Well, uh, can you Google it? It's it's a Kurt Cameron it's about, movie. He's in he's like a firefighter or something. Yeah. It's called um. Shoot, the Love Dare. I mean, the Love this Dare is, is the this is book. fascinating. The Love Dare is the book. It's a good. It's a good story. It's a campy little Christian it's movie. It's like a Nicholas Sparks thing. Kind of. Kind of. But basically, he's fireproof. Si- fireproof. He's sitting there going, "I just don't understand why she won't change." And then eventually, all of his firefighting buddies just go, "Dude, you're the one with the problem." And I think that. And so he starts doing all these little things to try and change his behavior. And I found the love dare to be like it didn't save my marriage, but it did extend it about six months <laughs> because our relationship did improve because I recognized that I was doing things that were harsh and hard hearted. Mm-hmm. And I think that if we're ever going to get leadership in politics that recognizes humanity, then we must speak to them in a humane way. And we're not doing that. We're not allowing them either to to be real and authentic because then we'll vote their ass out. Well, I will personally say, so somebody who used to be like a diehard Republican, raised super conservative, I have come a long way from that yeah. because You've come a, a long, long way, from 2012. way. I've come so far from that. And honestly, I've gotten out of politics because of the fighting. I My best friend is a Bernie Sanders loving bitch like that's just what she is and i love her for it like she's my best friend i can't help it but she's, she's really irritating on facebook you'd hate her my right? best friend is great she's great but she's she not takes that my Ohio, side against it? yours no no she takes my side against chris's no, that's why chris doesn't no, like her she's like oh my god feminist and bernie uh, oh that's amanda yeah. that's not yeah. oh. that's amanda she's also hey, we don't a really good friend of mine no. <laughs> yeah. no that's fine i have two different are you friends. talking about megan she has two oh, friends Megan. i have multiple two friends i have multiple friends that are democrat and ranging in left whatever and we all respect each other we don't agree with each other's opinions but we don't talk about it because we know there's zero point talking about it and we're good friends like we are literally my best friend when i vote or worked for mitt romney voted for barack obama like that's a stab in the heart but she's my best friend and so like was she's no <laughs> she voted still for barack obama <laughs> she still is Sorry. and she voted for bernie and then she voted for hillary Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so the point is, like, I just got away from the, like, you have to separate yourself from that, and you have to really honestly realize that um, people are allowed to have different opinions. You're not always right. They're not always right. And that's part of it. And I will yell at anybody who um, called President Obama any other derogatory term. I get angry at people who call President Trump any sort of derogatory term. Like, it's not okay. They have a level of office. I would contend you hated office. Trump. You d- had, like, a natural aversion to Trump more so than you did even Obama. Yeah. But still, he's still the president. And if Hillary had won, she would still be President Clinton. Like, you have to respect their offices. You don't have to disagree or agree with them. And you don't have to keep it inside of you. But you have to be respectful. You have to admit that other people are allowed to have their own opinion. 
hands and you just have to love like you just don't need to hold hands and sing kumbaya i don't know I but guess, i guess i well, don't necessarily toleration agree. i guess yeah. i don't necessarily agree that you have to respect the office but I do think that you you don't need to go out of your way to, I guess really what I'm trying to say is that you need to never lose sight on the fact that like these people bleed and yeah, that they're, they're not beings. making fun of Baron Trump makes you a shitty person. For right. Instance. Or holding up the head of Scowls Donald Trump. Well, then well, Kathy Lee Griffin was like, right. oh, well, who wasn't against Don Baron? Well, he is a little kid. Of course, he's going to be bothered by the fact you're holding a head, his dad's head. Ooh. Well, and I think it's interesting that you brought up the point of tolerating others because you see, well, me personally, I mean, on a college campus, yeah. If you're, yeah. like I've said before, if you're a Republican, you're a Nazi, basically. Like, everybody is... They wish you had been shot yesterday. Right. Everybody's liberal. Everybody's a Democrat. But I still... Some of my best friends are Democrats or liberals, whatever. But um, it's just interesting because these people are some of my best friends. Yet, later that day on Facebook, and I'm sure you guys noticed, especially during the election, um, so many posts saying, this is it. If you support Trump, if you support so and so, unfriend me I right was, now. I, was, I, I unfriended some people. Click, <laughs> click right now because I yeah. just don't understand, and I never did. But part of I me totally is like, did. <laughs> I was asked to leave a wedding party like you as a groomsman. No, swear to God, for well, real. Yeah. What? I still got invited, but I was not a groomsman any longer. What? <laughs> swear to God. Did you go to the wedding? Yeah, of course. Oh. I don't well, care. And that's the thing. It's just oh, like I would have trolled it. I would have been. I oh, I would have. Going on so MAGA shirt. Greg's a good person. I no, it just doesn't matter that an much. Apology. But <laughs> <laughs> does anyone have any? I'm <laughs> staging a cry in at your wedding. Apologize. <laughs> 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 but that's just the thing. It's like they preach love and acceptance mm. and all of this stuff for all people of different races and um, backgrounds and sexual orientations. Yet, if you have a different political view than them. If you're, <gasps> if you're sen if you're center right, even if you're center right of them, if you're uh, if you're uh, like Howard Dean now, he was such a ah! oh my god, <laughs> <I'm a genius. laughs> yeah. like Howard Dean. If you listen to the latest Ezra Klein podcast with uh, whoever the lady that was that helped run the tech on his campaign, if you listen to that podcast about the Howard Dean campaign, and you realize how far left the modern Democratic and the lib and the progressives have gone now. To the point that the Antifa, Antifa people are just like, are the they're Leninist revolutionaries trying yeah. to? I mean, we're back to the Weather Underground days. Exactly. Um, and, the militant Soviet left. And, and it's if so, if you're just a traditional Indiana Democrat, you're, you're John Gregg would you're have no much. home in the a Democratic yeah. Party anymore. Well, and that's what I think is interesting is to combat what I just said is these people say, well, of course. We don't agree with you. It's not about it's not about political parties. It's about you supporting a openly bigoted, racist, homophobic, horrible person. Like if somebody was a Nazi, we wouldn't respect them. So that's basically you're as bad as them. Right. Yeah, you are a Nazi because Trump's a Nazi because. I just be like, have you met Hillary Clinton? But the point, right. the point, she like, eats children. She drinks she's their like blood. She's actually a horrible person. But she has guru disease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's creepy. The 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 reality is is that we used to have labels for people's ideologies, IDs, I ideas, ideal ideologies. It was disagreements like people, people, of but, but political people, philosophy. People used mm -hmm. to think is my point. Yep. And, and so now you you can't label emotions. Like you can label emotions like angry and sad, but when they start when you start spiraling into well he is all these adjectives and you just can't even challenge it. It's just it's a bizarre state of the world and it's led us to a darker place, and I just don't know how, how we we again we can't fix other people. All we can do is just focus on our behavior uh, and, and trying to find out rational, reasonable sources like this, where we're trying to create a home for people who don't fit into all these crazy. You know, like we're just not we're not extremists. No, you know, I mean we're we're, just, we're very much prag prag pragmatic but above all else, we're moderate. We have our views, but we're not going to say we need to do this today. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a libertarian, but I'm not saying we need private police in Southport, Indiana right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's not what we're not even remotely ready for that. It'd be counterproductive. And so it's it's sad. I mean, I don't know what you do. Donald Trump's mm -hmm. kind of the perfect culmination of all of this cuz he's an abstraction. Do you, any of you think of Donald Trump as a, as a person? Uh, I don't. I've lost track of him. Yeah. Like no, I, he, I for, I, but I mean, I never remember him being a person first. Well, like because it was Trump, the brand, the bigger than life. Well, and that's it's always been a buffoonish, you know, like abstraction or you know thought. Right. 
And well, and that's interesting. It's I've never thought of him, and it's not like in a derogatory sense. It's true. Like he's the brand, except for was it Ivanka who just posted that picture um, of like it was like a cartoon of like God hugging mm-hmm. Donald Trump and yeah. said like Please pray for my father. Yep. Right. And that kind of I was like, he's real. Even well, yeah. right. And even me, I'm not like a huge Trump hater. I mean, I don't like the guy, but I'm not one of those people out on the front lines. And even me, that was like wow. Like you take a step back. So I'm like. Can't imagine if that did anything for the actual psychos, but uh, probably not. But. No, I mean, that's the thing is the lines are drawn. And then a lot of it, too, is like this guy, I, I think he was rational because he talked to the mayor. The former Democratic mayor of uh, Alexandria lost this last November, but he went to the same YMCA that this guy was out in the mm-hmm. lobby using his laptop all day on forums and on the internet on the websites. And so he was completely rational. He was talking to him. He goes, hey, you know, I'm from Illinois. I'm here for a trip, and then I'm looking for work. He's a former um, home inspector. That's what his job was. Right. And so uh, his business shut down. He left his wife back in Belleville, Illinois. And so he was asking him for work. They asked. He asked him for um, restaurant recommendations. He was asking him for all different kinds of things. Um, and every time politics was brought up, they'd say something negative about Trump, or you know, it'd be a, a conversation with the group. He would he would keep it to himself or be like, "Yeah, I agree with you guys," and was very very like. That's what was scary to me. How he behaved. And the fact that he shuts down his business almost self radicalizes with right. progr- like progressivism by be- and in his entire existence had become the internet. Right. How like he was sitting in the lobby uh, two uh, months. He left Illinois. I think it was a chem- I'll bet you it was a chemical imbalance. Like something snapped in his head. I'll I mean, bet you. So you're saying he uh, his entire existence became the internet. He's been all his well, he <laughs> became an obsession because he, he volunteered. Became, I'm running away, I'm hiding <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> Basically he was a leftist shitlord. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then Did James Neese threatened to sew him out of a helicopter and then <laughs> here we are. But now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, cat. <laughs> What'd you say? Why don't you so check did he have your a podcast? mirror again? <laughs> Shut up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he he really went down the well because he hadn't he hasn't uh, he's talked to his wife, but he just went on. The neighbor came and asked, you know, is he okay? And right. asked the wife, and she did an uh, interview with ABC yesterday. And he, oh yeah, he just went on a trip for a couple months and lived out of a white van. I uh, used the well, YMCA to shower and work out, and then I'll used their internet all day that. sitting in there. Uh, but that's the thing is, the mayor was like, this was a stable guy. Like no, like irrational anger. Yeah, that happens. Like that's yeah. part of mental. I mean, anything. You like, can you be get calm. Sick and you just like you're fine one day and you're literally. Dying I just wonder if he didn't next. spin himself into a frenzy reading only like reaffirming things. Hey, Honestly, I, I wish we could delete Facebook for, and Twitter and all of social media from everything. I, I, I I'm like not. I'm not so gonna much. lie. As much as I love social media because it, it it gives me a career and it's given us a platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll tell you the. A, uh, did anybody? Did any of you see the piece on sixty Minutes this past week mm-hmm. on Aaron Andrews on, and then uh, n- on your phones? The mm-hmm. the uh, and we'll ha- we'll have to put these in the show notes on wearelibertarians dot com. But this piece uh, on on the cell phones that the Google ethicist basically oh, you were telling me about that he is now speaking out saying yeah. your phones are incredibly addictive. It oh, is, more so than any drug you could take. It is changing your brains. Like we yeah. we did an episode somewhere in the one hundreds that I saw where we talked about books where I, long I, form reading's gone. Bl- There's no attention span time for it. Right. Uh, I used to love to read, and I struggle with reading now. Yeah. Like, I swear it's to God, terrible. Like there are days I wish I could just go back to it. Like I'm really tempted to go back to a flip phone. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, because the the uh, dopamine hit. Oh, it's enormous. Of these devices and of Facebook that he, he they basically were saying that uh, this one guy who runs a neuro marketing f- f- digital yeah. firm in they LA. They basically just exploit and try to rewire your brain. Yeah, they hold like <clears throat> Instagram, for instance, Instagram holds likes and then releases the likes. Well, like, based on an algorithm perfectly designed mm-hmm. to get you to come back. Kat, yeah. what were you doing? Literally. Instagram? Well, actually I was, but I was just checking my mom just sent a text funny uh shooting on i-465 which is the interstate in indiana uh somebody was shooting at a truck with a make america great again flag and sticker really is, is that confirmed or is that from conservative tree well that's why i was on facebook <laughs> i was on facebook trying to see if it was real or not did washington post well, do fake news again isn't that interesting that she just went to facebook to fact check that and not yeah. google well that's yeah. the thing oh yeah it's facebook faster. is for people 45 to 25 64 or 6 percent of our information originates from there yeah which is terrible because facebook is full of fake news and everybody yeah. knows that exactly and that's like what the friends especially we are libertarians yeah. right and the reason i check it it's it's faster like 
do you know how it's annoying when there's like uh okay when i was in high school there was a shooting um at a <laughs> i shouldn't laugh <laughs> yeah did you, did, did you date him I've yeah it was my boyfriend no uh that was yeah. weird somebody we shot up, you know. up uh the supermarket that's like five minutes from my house and we were just refreshing the yeah, you're laughing, the, you're the terrible. Life feed. Goddamn cantaloupes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, two people died. No, but we were like, oh, real? yeah, no, it was messed up. But kind of bad now. We were somebody's mom. No, but we were like refreshing <laughs> the news app over and over. Dead moms are not funny. And it yeah. takes forever for the news to actually update. They, they weren't updating. Yeah, because they have to check facts. Yeah, they're, they're hamstrung because they have to get two sources before they can publish. Yeah. And whereas right. other places can go on like an un- just... anonymous source if you're Washington Post. Exactly. Yeah. Or New York Times. <laughs> but that's what I mean. That's what they did today. Yeah. So I, it, it is. It's just it's it's uh, maddening. And and I'm not by any means uh, one of these people who thinks that the internet or anywhere should be censored. But after watching that 60 minutes piece on the cell phones. You know, where, like, Instagram just basically holds back likes and then dumps them so you get notifications at a time specifically tailored to you mm-hmm. that they know you may have a break in your day because we are we are rhythmic creatures. Mm-hmm. And so then it just it lures you into your phone. And now we're at a point where it, two out of every minutes, uh, two out of every five minutes for most people are spent on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Which is an incredible statistic. Yeah, I mean, it is the operating system of the new world. Like, yeah. it is Microsoft Windows, just in yeah. a different form. Two of the best decisions I ever made. The first one was turning off push notifications for Facebook. Yes. Yep, yes. I did that. Second all one, notifications for all The second one was deleting my Facebook app. And now, in order to check Facebook, I have to either be on my computer or actually log on to the Facebook site on my phone, which yeah. is a Sent pain. from browser. Yeah. Yeah. No, for, but for real. Like, yeah. that, those two items, like, changed my life. And... Uh, Except for my mom and a few people that would kill so me Mary if I deleted Todd Facebook. Would be I would best probably decision. delete Facebook. So my thing yeah. is, is where does it where does it end? Is this going to turn into like, for example, a super, you know, hipster and trendy thing to do is to oh yeah, we ride our bikes everywhere and stuff. Oh, absolutely. Driving. It already is. So do you think the new trendy thing is because um I've heard a few like celebrities talk about it you think the new trendy thing is yeah i got rid of my smartphone i just have a flip phone you i think, think we're going we're gonna go oh, backwards absolutely. I, think absolutely. It, I think so because ed sheeran just uh he was took a year off to do music he was like yeah i don't have a phone anymore i just have an Andrew ipad Luck has a flip phone yeah i genuinely believe and i think i've said it on the show before that i think by the end of this year you will see um, a movement starting to appear of people who are taking a stand against using social media and spending all their time on their phone. I, because I just think what? that we're starting to recognize that after after nine, ten years of having all these things, it's great, but it, it is hurting us in a way that is... So many that ways. is that is not good, but at the same time, the question time, is: Is it hurting us or is it just changing us? It's changing us, well, but at the same time, I think the uh, I, I can tell you I am not as smart as I was mm-hmm. before 2010 when I got a, I an haven't iPhone. had a good night's sleep since I was 16 and I got my iPhone. You're yeah. kidding? Well, because I check it. I'm on it constantly. It I close sleep. And then I sleep. Te- I sleep texted her sister this morning. <laughs> I sleep texted <laughs> Chloe. Something I, that was very interesting is. Last week, I think I was with Chloe. I, we were doing mock panel judges for Miss Indiana contestants. So we were like doing their interview, like mock interviews. And the girls had to come up with a platform. And then another question on their like resume is if you had another platform, what would it be? All of the girls ages, I don't know, Miss Indiana contestants are what, 18 to 22-ish, yeah. 23-ish? All of them, their second platform would be social media and Absolutely. how it is bad and affecting their generation. Well, really? and yeah, I, all of them. I think... I, I, I have noticed in the in having interns and being around a lot of interns, the the younger millennials, people like our friend Jeff Fibbert, for instance, um, or, or Kat, they're very protective about what information is actually put out about them. Whereas the older millennials like myself just don't really care because it was so new yep. and we were old enough to make the decision as to what we would put out there or not. Whereas Kat had Snapchat in high school. Like God. we didn't, we didn't have cell phones in high school. Oh. Well, you know? no, I got my first cell phone when I got my driver's license. Right. Well, and that was and a the flip phone. Th- and the interesting thing is, is that we, a part of our school curriculum was based on social media and how, like, how, which parts? social media bullying, I guess. Oh, cyberbullying. Like, yeah. Cyber, cyberbullying. Greg's an expert. Greg's an expert. I didn't right. invent it, but I made it an art form. But <laughs> it's, it's so funny because in elementary school that 
what the heck was that? But it wasn't until middle and high school is when it was really cyberbullying, really pushing on cyberbullying, less on physical bullying. That's why oh, when... psychological bullying is way worse. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, when these shows come out, like Netflix's 13 Reasons Why, and you see these kids, or you watch old movies or TV shows from, you know, early 2000s, late 90s, and you see these kids oh. getting mm -hmm. um, older. You see these kids getting... Fucking ageist. You know, like beaten up at, in their lunch money stolen and and it's just so unrealistic but the people in charge of these tv shows and movies because that's how it was that's then. how bullying was then they think that's how it is and so no. it's really not registering for kids because it's now it's, it's, not all it's all online it's all online so the the um the 60 minutes piece talked about it was by anderson cooper and anderson uh, had all these uh, you've eaten half a loaf of blueberry bread Hannah I stop this it this is my second slice and the butter is soft now <laughs> <laughs> I might it's also on fire <laughs> <laughs> it's been singed around the edges it's I fine. love Burnt we, have, okay. we have a chair just off camera and Mittens is just judging, judging the shit out of <laughs> Hannah it's the literal feline bullying lack of shit that I give about how <laughs> oh my don't. god he's so <laughs> judging yeah. me look at, look at, <laughs> uh, that's so awesome don't, just assume the cat's gender I'll post hey, a photo of it on don't the check your don't check your Facebook because they are just cyber bullying the shit out of you right now. <laughs> I don't know who, me? No, the cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, cat I, space. I basically have, uh, I will take a photo and put that up on our Instagram. But That was so bad. That was terrifying, guys. I think he's going to come kill me in my sleep. Um, well, if you keep misassuming her gender, she's going to. <laughs> So I, in this piece, Anderson Cooper had his phone just out of reach, and they hooked him up to all these monitors, and they started uh, texting him. And every time that he had, uh, he had a text message and he couldn't read it, he had all these like physiological mm -hmm. uh, reactions. Neuroses, yeah. And they've, huh. they've determined that that moment causes cortisol, that if your phone is out of reach and you hear a ding, cortisol shoots. So your phone is f making you fat. Cortisol is the hormone. I'm that, throwing my phone away right now. Right, like so. Give me some more blueberry <laughs> bread with butter. <laughs> yeah, it's not the phone, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast audio bullying. My <laughs> God, bitch. <Yeah. laughs> Might be that bread and that, extra, <laughs> and that extra helping of butter you just spread all over there. Sorry, you can't sit at this table anymore. That, You're not a plastic. That's oh. uh, that's good Irish Irish uh, cream butter. So it looks delicious. Yeah, it's I'm about good. to have a little bit like this. Uh, so it's a little hard still, but it works. Gregory. You you have. Have, but cortisol is the stress hormone, and it 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 is basically the the biological reason that you have cortisol is that it says, "Hey, we're in danger. We're in danger of dying. Store this fat. Store this energy." So your phone is making you fat. That is a lot so of. So that's released from yeah. the anxiety Can from I not being able to check. You're, All right, yep. this is my phone. Trash. Yeah, it's just gone. <laughs> that's so, an opal. Nobody's impressed. Yeah, it's a Samsung. it's an Obama phone. No, it's actually um. A piece of a shit. A Motorola, <laughs> and it's really a piece of shit. I'm getting a new phone. Oh, I'm getting a new phone either this month or next. Nice. So we'll see what I get. Get a flip phone. I might. Do I it. mean, and here's the thing, Social. and correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so middle school, because I got my first smart, I've got the iPhone 4 in white. Uh, in of course you did. Right, of course. Uh, 20, 2012, I think, yeah. So I was a sophomore in high school, 16th birthday. And um, I know, I was no. little. Oh, man. And... Then, so four years ago, three, four years ago, it was horrible. The amount of texting, texting during, uh, mm -hmm. texting during class. Well, they eventually the installed those player. machines to knock out wireless service. But right. People just logged on the internet. Texting during this, texting during that. I mean, people were glued to their phones. Mm -hmm. And I think now, a few, three, four years later, I think people are glued to their phones. But I think not necessarily. I feel like a courtesy was kind of learned. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Because I feel like. People my age, especially, I don't look in class and, you know, people aren't texting Blue nonstop. to their phone all the time. But yeah. I think our so, age is. So like I don't. Mine is definitely. Is still. it? Mm -hmm. Well, I know for like for our generation and then like, so I'm, uh, God, I'm going to be 32. But um, for m like us, there's actually, it's a phenomenon called flubbing. So like when you're out at like dinner with friends and all you're doing is looking at your phone, it's, mm -hmm. or, yeah, flubbing. So it's phone ignoring. Hmm. Yeah, that's the, the that's the like phrase for See, it. See, and I don't know because you're sitting if it's there looking at your phone while you're doing a podcast right. and not paying attention. I'm listening. It's flubbing. <laughs> well, and it's I where don't you go clubbing. <laughs> flubber. You right, right. Jiggle to the left. <laughs> um, and I don't know if it's just my. I kind of caught the 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 mm -hmm. end of learning about cyber like because I feel like older people it was all just wow check out these cool new products but my generation really caught the first wave of hey th we're starting to recognize problems. 
So we learned You're not so addicted because also you guys, it's interesting. You don't have like user patterns right. that mirror ours. Like we were obsessed with Facebook. So we came from MySpace, uh -huh. transitioned right. over. Then it was Twitter is cool, but then we got bored with it. You guys are distributed across a bunch of different yeah. ones, like Visco. Yeah. Um, then Tumblr so for you and your What's Taylor Swift Visco? blog. Right. Uh, it's it's a, a Instagram competitor. Like even it's like a photography app. Yeah. Wow. I'm old. I think it's. I don't know. I think it's interesting. I just think my age group, we caught the first wave of learning about courtesy with phones, with smartphones, with that kind of stuff. So was that like, learned or was it like or was that like reactive? That you just observed and noticed or was it like proactive drilled into you? You know, we I remember a few like my public speaking classes. We would learn about like uh, like business classes, job interview classes, um, whenever like job people, job fair people would come. Professional development. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the word, obviously, but um, <laughs> not professional. But yeah, so I don't know. And I can only imagine it must be worse for younger kids. I know like I think element or middle and high school kids now that I know still all they do. It's less thought driven and more image driven. Yeah. So all they are on is Snapchat and mm -hmm. Instagram, whereas my age group, Hannah's age group, it's all about. Here's Twitter, my open diary. Here's mm -hmm. Facebook. The, the Let me I, tell you what I'm eating right now. The, exactly. The idea of Bitner. sitting down and reading a book. <laughs> Ooh, I bet you taste nasty. Not that I would know. The <laughs> idea of sitting down and reading a book for generations after ours is gone. The, uh, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the We are now going to return to storytelling and in in, in verbal verbal storytelling in the, in the way that Homer shared information. Mm -hmm. You had these stories being told and passed down through generations as a way of remembering because they didn't have writing. And uh, I think that's really where we're headed. We're heading towards digital memory and We still uh, communicate photos. even more efficiently because like we use vi like vi photos and audio. Right. And so it's, I mean, you can make the argument that it's way more efficient because you're actually sending and transmitting more information. Much quicker, but, but and, and so I want to tie this all back to the shooting because I feel occasionally a little like there's a psychosis around my use of my phone. Like, do you ever just get like, you just, there's like this, just this weird feeling that I have sometimes when I'm, I don't have my phone or I'm not near my phone or like, I just like, I don't know. I just get, oh, I, I get crazy, <laughs> yeah. you know, or I just am anxiety. like anxiety. Yeah. And I, f and I wonder in the older generations, such as the baby boomer generation, like, uh, the, the shooter was of the baby boomer generation. They've really taken Facebook by storm and turned it into a real shithole. <laughs> yeah. Like my grandma's hilarious. You, yeah, yeah like. <laughs> uh, so I think we're much more thoughtful about a lot of the. Th I don't see a lot of younger people going hard on the Facebook. It's the older generations who are like just. I don't know if they just get old and go and go senile and just start saying the craziest shit online, but. I think it's uh, like. It's the it's your older aunt Donna who's posting shit where you're just like oh my gosh what I troll the crap out of some of those old people and I don't I don't I don't know what so that easy. I don't know what that is but I'm wondering if just social media has just kind of elevated that disconnection that well, sometimes I even I, feel but think about it like those older people they and I I say this with all love in my heart because. I have some grandparents who are this way, but like they were the racists. They oh. were, they were, but they, they were. were, they were the racists. They were um, like, they were the anti, like the seventies, the love, whatever. anti disestablishment like, yeah, 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 pretty much. And so they've all felt this way for a very long time. And now they have a platform to like actually blast their beliefs, beliefs. And they don't understand that when they were doing that, when they were younger, they were with people that agreed with them. But now it's on a social media. Like they don't understand the concept of social media. They yeah. just think that they can get on there and blast all their stuff in all caps, and everybody's going to agree with them. They don't understand. All caps. Those they do. God, yeah. No. The Why are you screaming? Like, I'm friends don't. with a lady named Pearl Sparkman. This lady crazy. <laughs> she posts some of the craziest yeah. all cap stuff. Well, I've and ever you seen. have to they, think. They don't. They just don't grasp like that concept. And, and so, in the same way that Cat only sees cat aged people, this guy is seeing baby boomer nut jobs there and they have the same level of argument only probably mm -hmm. a little more vicious that we do on ours well and yeah. here's the thing two points one i think also it's because facebook is such a user-friendly um right. platform it would have never won out if it wasn't and here's the and exactly and here's God the bless thing Mark Zuckerberg. that age group they're i mean they're not as techno right like, they're not good with technology, so they're not going to be able to learn two, three, four new platforms. Facebook's easy and it's available. It's like a phone company, and it's everything they need. It's Facebook. If you think about it, it like Instagram, Twitter, it stole from Send Facebook. Money. Right. 
money, Instagram everything. Instagram is owned by Facebook. Yep, like they, they stole from it and they bought it. So it's why learn all these separate platforms when they can just use one big one. It's uh-huh. easy. Well, it's, you know, it's economies of scale. Like, you know, it makes exactly. any, any network is direct. Like uh, any network, <laughs> every time someone joins it, it, it actually doubles in value. Like right. More so. Uh, what is that law? It's like a K factor or whatever. Yeah. But it's so any, any network is that way. And that's why they inevitably take over and win viral growth well and the other yeah and the other thing is that if i didn't know better okay so i know you it's funny but uh tumblr for example Mm -hmm. very young kids use it Mm -hmm. very liberal it's it's the most liberal website oh yeah and i that's why i mock it and make fun of it because it's a hilarious well and here's the thing if i didn't know better i'm scrolling through tumblr um let's say i had no knowledge of politics doesn't matter how old i am i would completely be consumed like these kids are so crazy so hateful they're the ones that's the platform i was talking about the kids who say they're the ones that like twist professors necks and oh yeah even though they're liberal the professor's liberal they're just willing to allow diversity exactly of opinion. they're the ones who are saying wow we need to enslave white people like the craziest stuff <laughs> that's that we the only make way fun we'll of. Get social justice i dare you well and the craziest <laughs> the craziest stuff that we make fun of comes a lot of times from those young kids on Tumblr. And like I said, if I didn't know any better and I was just scrolling through Tumblr, I mean, some of the stuff, the rhetoric they use, I would believe it. Oh, it's dystopian. Like, I mean, it's so far removed from actual reality, but in that cocoon and in that incubator, it just, it, it's like, it's almost a constant battle to see who can have the most shock value. Exactly. And here's the thing. They have little nuggets of truth in there. They have little fact checks in right. there. Like they're very good at what they do. I mean, they're just they're a good at crafting group. a narrative and only using things that support their exactly. positions. So it's just that's what scares me is these younger and younger kids are using platforms. Whereas Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, if you say that kind of stuff, you'll get called out. But Tumblr, no other older because it's Tumblr is a very hard um, interface to use. It's very, compared to. Well, I mean, Facebook, it's Twitter. not a natural like it's a it's a like a picture blogging platform, and you're not used to like interacting with others on it. It's it, just purely pr- like promotion, exactly, like, like a food diary, right? And I'm twenty, like a keto Chris. diary, or keto oh, diary, good right? God. And I'm twenty, and Did you I'm really say that? yeah, like I know a lot about social media, but for Hair flip. twenty, <laughs> but um, <laughs> Tumblr is just. I've been on it for like a year and a half and I still am like, I don't know about this. So it's just these younger and younger kids who are getting incorporated into it are having these ideas. And I'm like, this is the root of the problem. Like it's Tumblr. Like this is where these people are coming from. And I think it's, they're starting to bleed over to the bigger platforms. They can. I mean, everything's going to go that way though, because everything's driven. It's like the Instagram algorithm. So like that was what I was kind of writing about in that article is that the better Facebook gets at giving you what you're already wanting, the more your time you're going to spend on it. Yeah. So it, it has a specific like disincentive to never give you anything new that you may not click on or expose you to anything you dislike that you've already showed a preference for. So it just gradually keeps feeding you, it creates an echo chamber. It create it just and then it amplifies because the more time you spend on something, you can't help but become consumed by it, and you kind of go from like like this guy went from a passionate Bernie supporter. Mm-hmm. He wanted to stand up to corporate greed and corruption. Which is fair. Yep, and it, absolutely. It's completely fair because that is the whole like a lot of libertarianism. The whole point is that government always ends up being corrupt. Right. You know, it's not that the government is an evil entity, it's that people end up exploiting it to force it on others and then take advantage of it by using it to buy influence. Mm-hmm. And so this guy wasn't a, a weird guy. Like he was a Bernie volunteer, passed out flyers, they interviewed people that he supported or uh, worked with. Yes, he was passionate, but no, he wasn't a radical. This is all the way up until like last week when the mayor talked to him in the lobby of the YMCA, the former mayor. And so then though, where does it cross over when your world becomes so narrow and so intense that you start, you just lose grasp on reality. Yeah. There's just like a, it's like he just, some step. He snapped. Yeah, it was he, a slow boil, but then something happened where, but he was calm, and so he right. he watched behavior to see when was a good opportunity to, you know, that, that he could exploit and go after them. And he went and legally purchased two guns, purchased a nine millimeter and then a seven sixty two caliber rifle in Virginia. No, in Illinois, legally. Wow. Yeah, completely yeah, legally. Yeah, that's the thing. Because he'd been oh charged for God. battery, but it was dismissed, and it was a dispute, a domestic style dispute with okay. him, with his daughter and her boyfriend. Um, he probably didn't like the boyfriend. Yeah. Probably he was probably reasons. libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably a condescending libertarian talking right. about, if you would just read Rothbard. Your cat is freaking me out. You're, well, your cat 
my cat knows people. She just does, she knows <laughs> people good really judge well. Character. She's staring yeah. at you right now. He, she, it, whatever it is. And now it's judging Spangle for associating with you. Yeah. Like, it's like <laughs> legit. She's just cutely sitting on a chair. It's so adorable. Yeah, no, ch- cats ch- are terrible creatures. Check it out on uh, We Are Libertarians uh, Instagram. If, if she could, she would have a fake doll of your head hanging from her right paw. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I got to tell you, cats are the ultimate predators. Hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, the premise of your article that you wrote and, and get into it a little more deeply that that we're building these silos and we don't even mean to right because these things we use to communicate and where we're getting our news from are specifically designed to keep us coming back to give us anxiety when we don't check them right to remap our neural networks so that we only can take short bursts 140 characters bullet notes like most people I, I i used to love well one most books are bad right now that's the other thing is if you go to the book section and go to pol- the political or current affairs it's bill o'reilly porn like it's no it great is. thinker it's you know people who have a group of fans and so they give them a book like, like milo Melissa yeah exactly Donnie. except she's self-published awkward <laughs> <laughs> and uh but then like milo yiannopoulos fan of herself right like oh, re- Milo. well but i mean he's no great thinker but no. he was given a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar book yeah. deal because he had a group of people that would buy it not because well, he was good at his craft it's the it's the, everything is that way i mean that's why chicks on the right have a freaking radio rob kendall's show. their producer i know he is oh rob yeah I'm but invited uh, to his wedding are you chris i i uh, you guys they hashed it out i know yes I'm they're, they're besties i'm only going to the wedding unless there's an apology Speak now or forever. Hold well, your peace. I'm going to the wedding, so I, uh, it's gonna be fun, like your, your wedding. Speaking of weddings, Chris Spangle still has never bought me a wedding present. Oh, that's your when's your, your one wedding year anniversary? Was over uh, a year last, ago. Yeah, it was last oh, July. See, it was last March. Oh, that's oh right. see, I missed. Uh, I you have to have the gift in before a year after. So I do apologize. You're right. That was very bad of me. Did you just publicly apologize? I did. I owe her an apology. I told you she's the only girl that can like boss you around. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I was she, not expecting that. Apology I'm, not accepted. I'm well, in the wrong. You. I'm in the wrong. <laughs> but cause that was March. Oh, yeah, so right at the end of March because it was nice yeah, out that day. Yeah, the end of March. Yeah, it was 70 degrees the end of March. I have lots of bootleg day. footage from the wedding if you want to see it. We you? got to see Cat Sister's most awkward white person dance moves I have <laughs> ever were seen. Great. They were terrible. Horrendous they were would be a good description. Cat. Is she came to my wedding or came early and fluffed my dress. She was literally <laughs> laying underneath my dress. You guys it. became besties like right before your wedding. Yeah, we became, well, we pretty she much became did, best. She did it right just to get the, the infiltrated. I, I basically Bitten create. Not an <laughs> I have created a <laughs> network of my own misery. I take all these women in the past that I tried to date. I put them in a group chat. They become best friends, and then they just make fun of me. Then they tell I you. I never got put in that. Yeah, you did. You no, quit. I didn't. Did I? You quit. You're like these basic bitches suck. Oh, maybe. Yeah. You, you did. tried to date me? No. No, but I liked seeing your cleavage. <laughs> That's. Did you notice? There's none. You're. I. I've never wanted to date you. You're full of crap. No, I'm dead serious. No, you're full of crap. I because you tell you. everybody. You tell everybody, yeah, there was this one time she was over at my house. Oh, that apartment, is true. And we just looked at each other and we thought about cuddling. Side well, note, I never had that thought run through my head. No, that is you true. Say there was that. a moment. And then we were like, there oh, was a moment. No, that'd be weird. We were both lonely False. and vulnerable. It was in person no. sliding in DMs. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was pretty IRL funny. DMs. It was me wanting to watch a movie and him wanting to And cuddle. if you would have just had a flip flip flip. <laughs> Oh, Mittens no. just uh, basically <laughs> spilled 48 two ounces of water. And, and the cat, chain of events. <laughs> cat just spilled beer all over my computer. Oh, no. I'm going to go get paper towel. Uh, let's just and take a, a we'll take a break. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just flipped it all up in the air. Oh, oh that is hilarious. <laughs> no. Oh, Mike, we Here's never had happened. anything like this. Oh, and you just threw it on an open thing. <laughs> oh. Are we going to be okay? Yeah. yeah. OMG. <laughs> I didn't squeeze no, it. No, I know. Just like it's like the it pop. There's a mento. You need. You need some. <laughs> it was like that. an autistic pop. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have more over. paper towels? Yeah, I'll go get them. Oh my god. I can't believe that happened. <laughs> and then it was like one after another and another. <laughs> then Hannah goes and throws a towel on open cans. Sorry, I was trying to get I'm you helping. To it's my towel. own. I'm helping. We <laughs> 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 feel so good. <laughs> I'm just shocked that that beer it literally exploded. It did. Like, it I didn't squeeze it. It uh-uh. just. Oh my god! You guys have got a ton of beer left in there. So. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, whew. We had we had quite a, a chain reaction of events. 
Mittens jumped up on the table. His and cats are evil. Knocked over 48 ounces of water, which is a lot of water, and that cascaded <laughs> over to <laughs> cat's the, lap. The cat, the cat's lap, and your cat Anagnos's lap, which made her wildly swing her arms into a beer, which then started fizzing everywhere. No, I tried to move it out of the way, and, and it, I didn't squeeze it, but it exploded. Yeah, yep. she's got freakish strength. <laughs> yeah, and then got a good grip. And then I, I threw my computer. I moved my computer out of the way, and then I was. I stood up. I got the stuff. I handed paper towels to the girls, and I said, "In my mind, uh oh." <laughs> and then I had to go to the restroom. It was so. a Harry get the door and, moment. And, and then, and then, so to cover my shame, I sprayed too much Febreze, which led you to where I. So he sprayed at least half. Three fourths of the can of Febreze in there. Three fourths of Febreze. Right, and um, I had to pee, so I went in there, and all of a sudden I come out, and they're like, "Are you okay? You look a little flushed." And she like, was peaked, and yeah. I was like, "I think I'm about to have a panic attack and pass out from <laughs> inhaling too much Febreze." Chemical warfare. Like I almost, I had to get a drink of water. I had to sit down. <laughs> I was like, "I think I'm about to pass she out." She had literally the vapors. I know. Like my, I was like, "Oh god." She's still not that- fully like. You know, she's a little disheveled right now. She's not, she's not got her your wits hair, about her. Your hair needs fixed. <laughs> uh, selfie time. Right. No, I was in the bathroom all of a sudden. I was like... <sighs> and I was like, oh, God. That's what I do in the bathroom, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it just I almost I almost that, passed out. All of her equipment almost got destroyed. That shit was so bad Spangle had to change his shorts. <laughs> he literally <laughs> Hannah he the first thing Hannah says, shorts. Did you change your shorts? I, I went to It's the rest- not what you think. I went to the restroom and all of a sudden I heard silence and I they're all on the back porch. I'm like, I chased them out with my own <laughs> I did no, I did it because I was like, he probably wants privacy if he had to skirt over there that quick. And now Kat's checking her uh, reflection. She is looking in the uh you guys made a comment yeah it was pretty wow bad. i do look like i'm you do not- you look sick you, you've lost the blood in your face oh my god <laughs> your cheeks a little i i didn't i didn't cook those hamburgers enough and uh, and i got attacked by uh by the hamburgers. hamburgers and so i i was like you know what i'm just gonna change into some basketball shorts instead of like my my work shorts and I my cargos <laughs> my <laughs> formal cargos and <laughs> hannah immediately never missing an opportunity to yes. nitpick me goes Mm. Uh, you change your pants? Yes. <laughs> Did you shit your pants? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, what what else would you think? You went That's to the exactly restroom right. for an extended period of time. <laughs> you mustard gassed your house. <laughs> And then you came out in gym shorts with a pattern matching <laughs> matching your Trump cat shirt. <laughs> and the sad part Fashion is, forward. I almost passed out, not from Spangle smell, but from the smell yeah. of covering it up. Yes. I, and that's always the worst. It's like they said about Watergate. It's not the crime, they it's the cover mix. up. No. They do not mix. I should have just left my shame lingering in the air. <laughs> you smell that? I just love calling... That's the kale I had this morning. <laughs> I love calling shit shame. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever smelled this much fiber in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about the the shooting. Uh, do we want to talk more about uh, what you covered in your article, or, sh- or are we done with that? You well, I mean, I think people get the gist of it. It's one of those things. I think everyone's. It's it is it isn't intentional. Like, but our whole world is designed for customization. You know, we get pissy if we can't get the exact version of whatever we want in a tailored experience in anything in our life. Right. You know, you get upset that you. Oh, I didn't want that one. I wanted the white iPhone 4. Right. You know, like you don't want just the black one. Right. But, um, (laughs) but so that entitlement, like that expectation has been, you know, that is, it created a world where these, these self-learning algorithms and like artificial intelligence just cocoon us completely from exposure to any other ideas. Right. And I think it raises an interesting question because what happens when, um, you know, I was we're talking about the Civil War because we comes. You know, a couple of social scientists have published papers saying that polarization is as bad as it was pre Civil War. Mm. And the thing was, though, Civil War is pretty simple. You know, obviously slavery and state sovereignty. Like, you right. know, do they have the right as a state to pull out? Right. And so that isn't the case, though. Now, now outrage is so individualized and personalized. I was making the point that like Lincoln would have to give a custom version of the Gettysburg Address to every single individual that he wanted to convince, yeah, and that's not possible. I mean, John Brown would just start murdering people because they hurt his feels at this point, right? And and right. like yeah, and then they'd only, but then you, but Facebook knows and Twitter knows and Instagram knows they're only going to put you around people that already believe like you, and most of the time they're even more passionate, and mm-hmm. so it's just like a slow boil until you work yourself into a frenzy, right? 
I get so distracted by Cat like taking selfies. It's I'm hilarious. I'm just promoting We Are Libertarians as a show. I I'm appreciate feeling it. very attacked right now. I almost died in that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you guys you appreciate. Would have been the first the I feel like edit. <laughs> you would have been Ooh. the first wall martyr. Yeah. Yeah. And it was <laughs> unwilling. <laughs> I just really had to pee. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Story of my life. And then Spangle wage the fecal jihad. <laughs> <laughs> there was a fecal urgency that was just, it was very aggressive. <laughs> oh, um, so how do, is there anything we can do? Is this just the new world? I think it's twofold. I mean, I do think events like this end up being inflection points where there's, people want a softening tone. Right. You know, I think that it was something we talked about right after the election, because a lot of people thought I was just like so pro-Trump and I, it wasn't that I was pro-Trump, is that I, this movement has been brewing for a while. Absolutely. And it's still brewing. But every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the people that are most easy, or the, the type of messaging that would defeat a Trump and sort of moderate and tone down society would be the more rational, the calm-minded, more state, like a statesman. Right. People, talk, you know, preaching love and toleration. But nobody because wants... Because people will want that in time. But they don't want Dick Luger. No, no, it has to be the right. <laughs> obviously, everything has to be the right messenger. Right. You know, it has Richard to be. Murdoch. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it can't be, there can't be the disconnect between the messenger and the message. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like it, it, w it wouldn't work if you threw Oprah out. It just seemed cheap and that you want, oh, anybody's celebrity can be president. Or right. Whatever. But it'll be someone that shocks you and you don't necessarily see coming. Sure. Like Barack Obama. Exactly. High minded, yeah. you know, above the fray and just takes like, it was a storm because it was all authentic. Yep. Yeah. Well, they've said Mark Zuckerberg. He's laying the groundwork. He is. Uh, did you, mm. Hell, it'll never happen. Like he's, he's too autistic. Exactly. Like he's, he's literally. I mean, I, I don't mean that derogatory. I mean, you no. watch a video of him, and yeah. he, is he paints very by awkward. numbers. Right. Yeah. yeah, like he's yeah. incredibly brilliant, but at his craft, right? I, and you have to have a level of connection with the people. A Bill Clinton that was a little bit like. Um, like killer <laughs> like i feel your pain that kind of thing mm -hmm. someone that right. is more of an advocate but then still not like sappy you know like uh, falling down bleeding heart liberal right so you think okay so because trump technically a lot of people consider him a media person mm -hmm. because Only. he had his own tv show and whatnot he his, ho his whole first. like book and career has been how to manipulate book, the career, media all that kind of stuff and so he broke through now do you think we're gonna see um rock stars or no i think that kanye you're gonna wants see, to run kanye, well, you know i what think I mean. you're gonna see people in her primaries i don't think anyone will ever be able to do what he did no he took advantage of the right place at the right time he was cr like it was yeah. crazy yeah. he had to he, he he didn't win with the usual electorate like he mm -hmm. brought out new voters for the first i mean 30 percent of his voters in the primaries were first time republican registering individuals and right. 22 of those were first time voters right and that that can't be done like and that's only because they were so attached personally to trump which is why they don't give a shit about him being a hypocrite they're exactly. trump fans first and they trust him and if hit, that's what he decides that's what they believe and the party's second they don't care about well, the party the party didn't even want him and exactly there's, there's a huge part of me that really wants to believe in the good of people and believe that people like Kanye West will not actually be considered as viable uh, options. But you know, people say that exact same thing about Donald Trump. I, I know. Said, I said it on this podcast every episode. Yeah. So that's just oh, that's so what makes me like interested, I guess, is how far is this going to go? Like, what is Donald Trump the breakthrough or was this just a fluke? He's the inflection point. So then it'll tip back in the opposite direction because people don't want this. What we have now is mm -hmm. such a rabid, angry, toxic environment it doesn't even it's to the point where anything the own government bureaucracy has turned on the president of the united states mm -hmm. right that's treason you know the deep state has mm -hmm. been the sort the, the F, former fbi director was the leak mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's stunning yeah the sitting uh, yeah i mean he that's what happened to nixon that's what drove him crazy it right. wasn't nixon wasn't paranoid until he couldn't keep a conversation quiet Exactly. But after And Nixon, then he kept trying to find it and then broke the law because it drove him insane. I sometimes get very paranoid that we are in a in an irrevocable state because even though after Nixon came Reagan, came Clinton, you had these reformers who brought back people's respect and and trust in the government somewhat and then, you know, obviously Clinton and Reagan both in their presidency did things that eroded that. But during their campaign and their election, they they brought people back. It's still politics. Of and, course. And governing is still compromise, and that'll kill yeah. you every time. But I do worry that we're at a point now where there is some irrevocability because it is, it's just impossible in the internet age, once something happens, 
politics uh, sort of here's the the best way that I think most people can relate to it. You're you're 16 and you have a girlfriend or a, a boyfriend, and you two you two go all the way when you're 16 or Whoa. 17. You're never what are going, you referring to? You're never going back to hand jobs, you know. And and I feel like Donald Trump is is going <clears throat> all the way in the attack politics world, and that we're never going to be able to rein in the fringe elements of every political movement because say what you want it doesn't matter that this guy was a bernie supporter it it is it, it, he is somebody who is obviously psychologically disturbed if you want to kill people there's something wrong with you mm-hmm. and every movement for just a difference of opinion uh, uh, that's the thing exactly it's not right. because of any other reason that they hold an opposing view that's of the that's where he's different in a lot of these mass shooters that's the break th- the break is well, that point. he's now taking his psychosis into politics and that has has not been done no. you know where you know not the guy who yeah, the guy who shot gabby giffords was just literally crazy yeah this, this guy wasn't this, this was a guy functioning had a member of society that dissolved his inspection company legally he went to the government well, filed he had the an fee. agenda and here's the thing though is where does that stop because there are a lot of people especially my age who think that that was patriotism and that was okay absolutely right. he did he thought he, he was thought. paul revere and Exactly. So that's like, where does it stop? Like you see like the American government, like World War Two, they were killing people, but they were killing Nazis. They're killing the bad guys, the bad guys. Right. So these people are convinced that Republicans in the right and anybody who doesn't who don't agree with them are the bad guys. Yeah. So I think. Well, they've been taught that their whole life, though. So it's like, where does it is that just going to be the new norm? Usually like humans. Typically, there's a point like there's always some event that like resets you back to reality like mm-hmm. holy crap 9/11. i am yeah like 9 11 or there's a uniting event and i think this will be like a political rhetoric ni- uniting event I, I feel like that uh watching all of these these congressmen and everyone yesterday it seemed to shake them to their core it did I and there imagine. It should yeah and That's there terrifying. was there was just a, a guy got shot in the hip and has had three surgeries and is in critical condition because of, he believes tax cuts are better than free like college. he literally walked up and said are you all republicans mm-hmm. And they said yes, and he started Boom. opening fire. Like, right. I mean, that's that's like Columbine. Like, they walked in, they said, "Are you Christians?" Yes. All right, you're dead. Like, that's the same thing. Just uh, right politics. It's the Crusades. Like, yeah, you it's know? terrible. But, but I'm worried, barbarism. I'm worried that we can never, with the in the internet age, reign in the extremes of every movement. We will have to have it. Like, you know, the internet's become so prevalent because one, it's so easy to be to identify with. Pe- A lot of people are lonely, right? Yeah. And so, like, a lot of people are looking for social acceptance. And right. for most people, the d- digital is the community. So it's where they go to say what a bad day they're having, and then their friends surround them and give them things of support. Hey, that's, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, right. I mean, it is the, like, social capital declined. Like, and that's why there's right. no civic engagement in bowling leagues and uh, Shriners and Elks Club. Like, Which people don't do these things, but online they do. Mm-hmm. The only difference is when you're forced to join an organization – um, it's the same thing in news. There, the mass customization is what allows you to be radicalized. Because when you join the Republican Party, there's so many different blends of Republicanism. You moderate by being exposed to it, but right. you want the group identity. Same thing with the Democrats. Like the Democrats have Jim Webb, who is probably to the right of Donald Trump. Right. And then they would have someone like a Maxine Waters, who is a for, you know former violent a revolutionary Marxist. Right. And being in a big group like that forces conformity and moderation on you in a way that digital experience doesn't because you can you can a micro target and just build find people and discover people easier who reaffirm the most radical parts of your views and you're never forced to sort of I guess never forced to force toleration if you will. we we have it in the libertarian movement i mean there yeah. it, and i wouldn't say anarcho-capitalist but definitely there is a vein of the black and yellows that the that, revolutionary that, libertarians right that feel that that this was an acceptable act that right. it's justified know, because they're you know, you know they're you, gangsters and yeah. they're killing people every killing day with someone is cutting off okay. health care and that is true though for congress too because congress goes and authorizes drone strikes and uh, authorizes funding for these things because it's easy to think that isn't a kid that died. It's the people that, if that kid had grown up, it's an abstraction. You know, they're not thinking exactly. about a, putting a human face on it. Right. Which is with a killer. I mean, that's, and that's what, but that's what the internet does. It puts a layer between human interaction that makes 
harshness easier. So it was Flag Day yesterday when this t- when this took place, and I didn't I, even know that was it really. It was Flag Day. <laughs> That's boss, usually a huge Libertarian Day. My right. boss asked us on a conference call what we were doing for Flag Day. <laughs> I was like, um, <laughs> have you watched my the flag? news? Uh, burning one. Uh, <laughs> hey, why not? Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a piece of cloth, but. Uh, so I was convinced that this was this had to be one of ours, <laughs> you know. You were you I and was. Jeremiah was too, and I thought I eh, was like, not so fast, my friend. This is the but it didn't it didn't really add up that this was a right wing wacko in that attacking it, the moderates, re- Republicans. No. You rhinos have driven me over the edge, right? But to to somebody who is a an anarchist, they don't they don't care that they're, they're violating the, they're using violence to. I mean, but. It, let's say it had been somebody who affiliated with the libertarian movement in some way, shape, or form. Like Tim McVeigh. Like Timothy McVeigh, who who was a party, uh, member. a party member. You, When you become a party member of the Libertarian Party, you sign a pledge. It's called the Non-Aggression Principle, which says that you do not advocate the use of violence for to achieve political or social goals. So that the ends don't justify the means, or the means don't justify the ends, or whichever that you know what I mean is yeah. that you just can't just can't do whatever. It's it's libertarians, true libertarians believe that using violence is wrong, mm-hmm. and we are nonviolent, uh, democratic non-violent people. Majority, you know, it doesn't give you that. There is no moral right gained because the majority want it. Exactly, and so uh, a violent figure like a Malcolm X to arm Martin Luther King, mm-hmm. who was nonviolent. Uh, and so somebody who would take a gun just because they may have been at libertarian movement meetings of some shape or form or variety, they would not be a libertarian. They can say they're a libertarian or that they're a, a righty, but they're not. Because yeah, it's bad. It's, it's bread brand association, but that wasn't the cause of it. Right. You... You, uh, One bad skittle. You well, the non-aggression principle was started in the late in the early seventies because they weather were, underground. The, be, yeah, they were being targeted by the FBI and being investigated as a party, and so they instituted the non-aggression principle pledge, the Libertarian pledge, to satisfy a, uh, J. Edgar Hoover and exactly further right. investigation and infiltration. So, but it, it it is something that is at the very core of the Libertarian philosophy, and I just want to say that. Had this been somebody that was a libertarian member, I want everybody to understand that anybody that advocates for violence in any way, shape, or form, I don't care if it's followed up with, well, have they not committed violence upon us by aggressing against us because they are the state? No, you don't You don't use violence as a tool for political or social goals. That makes you unlibertarian. You don't take up arms to achieve political or social goals. So... Um, the oppression can't be third party outsourced like it is right. in government. It has exactly. to be direct one to one. Exactly right. And uh, this government is so massive and sprawling that um, it, killing a congressman who's third in line in the House doesn't do anything. And it's, it's it's a persuasion deal, guys. You got to go out and win hearts. It's counterproductive. And minds. I mean, it reinforces. You know, the it's like when a police officer dies, the parade comes out. You know, yep. blue lives mm-hmm. matter. Everyone loves the police all of a sudden. Right. Yep. It, it's totally counterproductive, but. The the response to this, I can't help but think how different it had been, and the crackdown that we would have seen on right groups, yeah, and and, and how much blame nobody blames Dur- Bernie Sanders at all whatsoever. No, and he they doesn't deserve any. Be. I, I saw Donald Trump getting blamed yesterday. I mean, it was just it's, well, it's he's just the insane. one inciting the rhetoric, of course. You know, that's in <sighs> like several several prominent liberal commentators for MSNBC and then oh, yeah. Vox and Mother Jones and uh, Daily Kos were saying. Isn't it the? I can't help but appreciate the irony of people who oppose gun control being taken out with guns, and this is within the hour. Well, and uh, he- uh, let's all sit back and blow that to smithereens, and then we'll get to cat. I'm sorry for, to cut you off. No, okay. Like the to to raise the gun control issue, uh, l- l- we'll get to guns in just a second. Let's go to cat. I mean, because I don't think it's a, it, it just it's bizarre to blame other people for the actions of one individual. Yep. Well, and that point right there is so hypocritical because aren't isn't the left the ones who are really pushing the not all Muslims are terrorists thing? Mm-hmm. And just because somebody claims ISIS doesn't mean they're Muslim, so we shouldn't view Muslims that way. So why are they viewing us all the same? 
in all Because it's the politically same. convenient and they can fundraise exactly. on it. Exactly. Right. So I just well, think that's extremely hypocritical. Oh, it always Somebody is. made the comment, was t- talking about, well, a gun's going to be taken away, blah, blah, blah. But my thing is, I mean, if you look at... Thank God, because the criminals won't at, have them in. Well, look yeah. at the at like Europe. Meth. They've literally yeah. killed people by driving through crowds with knives. guns, knives, blowing things up. They haven't been using guns in Europe and they're still killing lots of people. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. It, had, it really doesn't matter. If someone wants to kill you and they're they gonna are... They're going to do it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. There is nothing you can do to stop someone from killing you if they really want to. Unless yep. you can kill. Unless you have better force than they do. And, yeah. and 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 you know we are outsourcing the protection of these congressmen to Capitol police officers. So what you're doing in, instead of saying, let's encourage you to protect yourself with your own firearm, from MartinArmory.com, <laughs> you uh, <laughs> you are outsourcing to a Capitol police officer who then has to sacrifice their life for yours. And luckily but, they didn't have and, to. And then yeah. and then on top of that. We as taxpayers have to pay for all that. Like it, it the irony. Uh, it's not even irony. It's just flat out stupidity mm. to sit there and look at this situation and go, guns caused this. No, guns stopped this because mm-hmm. Rand Rand Paul was right. Had there not been two Capitol police officers, the officers there with weapons, combating somebody with weapons, then. It would, would have been have, like the Iranian parliament where a yeah. suicide bomber went in and it killed would have, 12. Well, yeah, it would have been a even, massacre. I mean, even with that, though, like if you're playing baseball, what are the chances you're going to have your gun strapped on sure. you? There's not that. So I think it doesn't matter. Like if the police hadn't been there, it would have been a lot worse than Well, and I anything. think it's interesting, though, is like I said, I feel like I know the um, response to all of these discussions just from things I've seen from people my own age. But their thing is, yes, guns saved the situation and made it. It stopped it from being way worse, but guns caused it in the first place. But I'm sorry and that's that what people uh, say we no. can't we can no longer tolerate the stupidity of the young mm-hmm. and the stupidity of the left. The fact is, is that guns are never going to not be around. You cannot yeah. in a in a country with as they're many banned w- in Chicago, Illinois, and that place is a war zone. And yeah. this <laughs> and an this actual it, war zone. Yeah, this guy. It is illegal. To, when we had the Libertarian Convention in Missouri and in, in St. Louis. We had to tell all of the members of the Libertarian Party of Indiana, do not drive across state lines with your guns. You will go to jail. Mm-hmm. And this guy bought two weapons in Illinois. He really? is, yeah. He it's is hard, very hard to the do. poster child for why gun control doesn't work. It's yeah. just, it's maddening. If it did, then we wouldn't have, you know, well, any of the problems we do. If, if banning things worked... We wouldn't have like mass drug use. Well, we wouldn't have. We wouldn't have the Kennedys because that's how they got rich. It's prohibition. Such a, it's yeah. just such a kindergarten r- logic to say that if we just get rid of guns, it's not. That's a not how policy works. No, it's an I, easy thing to it, take. It's not guns. Like I think it's the violence that's been accepted in culture. Like you look at all of the. Um, you look at the movies that are like there's so much violence everywhere like it permeates everything the news is full of violence movies are full of violence if it bleeds it leads shows are full of, like everything is full of violence like you're literally just surrounded facebook is full of violence. like again it's, facebook somebody killed somebody on live on facebook yeah. live like violence is everywhere and it's so like saturated into our culture it's almost normal like it's normal to wake up and hear a news story about five people being killed somewhere in the well, world because of violence like it's just normal and it's just becoming more and more the norm and it's not okay yeah and from some of my news classes at, at ball state is we're taught the structure of reporting news and it's you report the worst thing first yeah and it, maybe because it's breaking or what it, it needs well, to be said we're so first, desensitized to shock value it's it it's brings a, people it's in. competition or like a race to the top i mean you turn on there's a reason yeah like small town usa the front news uh story is you know kitten rescued from a tree whereas you know what i mean but it's yeah. like you it's <sighs> terrible yeah, horrible well, stuff. Well, nobody cares about Everyone loves to talk about, oh, wasn't that sweet? But then when yeah. somebody sees a massive wreck on 465, oh, yeah. they're all looking. Exactly. Right. No, there's an right. instinct to rubberneck it, and look at shocking things. It's hu- it's the human condition. We're fascinated well, by... And it's train it. out of yeah. care. It's, unnormal. it's not normal. Right. That's the real mm-hmm. thing, is that we're always going to look at what is not usual. It's but a it's becoming normal. Well, but it's... That, you just have to keep upping the ante. I, I, I just... I, I think that it's become... The images are becoming more normal, but the truth is is that if you go back and you, you really study history, we live at a time where we are shielded from death more than any other period yeah. in Our history. Our wars have theme music. We we <laughs> are not... We are not... Like our, we would have 100 years ago holding funerals in our front room where our ancestors, mm-hmm. our, our grandparents would be laying there for days. 
we're not, you know, we're not laying in, we're not carrying the dead bodies of our parents out to a cart. We won't even show them on the news if they come the back from Iraq. Exactly mm-hmm. right. You know, so we we are shielded from death and violence more than we ever are. And I would advocate for more real violence as opposed to fake violence. And I think that human beings are, in trading that off, it, we are really losing humanity and empathy and understanding the consequences of our decisions by not choosing to see uh, the real cost of war. You watch something, and and that's why I think you have something like Vice on HBO that takes off, is because they're willing to go and show you what is actually happening in the world and not shield you from the truth. Right, and I I mean, that's completely true. And if you you think about it, I mean, I guess it's, I, I'm every, I'm every bit as guilty of it because like I don't look at things that aren't wild and outrageous and it's continual <laughs> right. pushing of the envelope to to get me to even care, right? Yeah. You know, and like that that's just. The, but I mean, I don't think that that's some you you I'm to blame for. It. I don't think you're to blame for it. I think it's part of the human experience. Yep. But if you've ever seen the movie Goodwill, you ever seen Goodwill Hunting? I haven't. Have you heard of Robin Williams' cat? I know he's. Robin Williams is such a good yes. movie. It is. It, I feel Robin like I've seen that movie. Is. And there's of course ma- I do. Okay. You've seen it. It's a good I think movie. I have. You think so? Okay, yeah. It's like Make Ben Affleck cry. and Matt Damon, like they wrote it and it's what made them stars. Yeah, it's a good, good movie. So in that he's plays a psychologist and oh, the yeah, court of sci- or um, an MIT professor wants him to work with Matt Damon. He's a mathematics savant, but he needs therapy to kind of get over some issues. And so he's also genius. So he is talking to the psychologist and trying to, sh- you know, show that he's not smarter than him and he can even get in his head. And he, you know, Robin Williams says that I thought about what you said to me and I thought it made me lose sleep all night. And then I realized that you're the kind of person that could tell me every fact about what the Sistine Chapel, the history around it, every date and everything. But you can't tell me what it meant. You can't tell me how it smells, how it feels. And that's sort of like where we are as a society is we can we don't experience things, but we can tell you all about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't ever it never hits you or never hits home. Because so there's no impact. To you. Yeah, the, the human impact doesn't exist. But you, it's an abstraction. You can like uh, Tucker Carlson all night last night was talking about. Describe to me what it was like. Mm-hmm. And the thing was, it was almost so shocking to him, he couldn't even conceive of what that type of environment was like. Yeah. When the reality is, that's every street on the east side of Indianapolis after 11 p.m. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Yeah, we have that's entire, a reality. We have an entire generation of uh, of Black Americans who are growing up like that. Exactly. exactly. You know, and that's East Chicago is a war zone. Yep. US 41 heading to Chicago, where they actually have like the riot gear out in yeah Joliet, Illinois. And then we wonder why Ferguson happens. Right, but people yeah. don't go there. Right. You know, the people won't go. Like we talk about Gary, like we know it. Right. None of us have ever been on Gary at eleven o'clock on a Friday night. Never. God no. You um, know? Yeah. No way. And, and I think that's why. Um, mm. You know, I listened to coverage all day yesterday of of this, uh, and you know, so many of the congressmen were open about what what they saw and what they were they were talking about it and describing it and all that. But it wasn't until I was listening to POTUS Politics, which if you don't have Sirius XM. You sh- it's worth the internet subscription just for POTUS politics. If you love the show, you'll love that channel. Um, and they played the entire Joe Barton uh, talking about his sons and the human elements a- of it. A- and I'm getting goosebumps now because of it, because that was the moment when that that rush of empathy, that warm mm-hmm. feeling in the middle of me went, oh, these are people. Boom. You know, and I, and I had listened to the facts all day long, but it hadn't hit me that. Here's a young boy that is traumatized by seeing his mm-hmm. friends get shot. Why do I not consider these? We consider Rand Paul a person. Mm-hmm. Yep. We love Rand Paul as libertarians, but you know, uh, somebody, it doesn't realize that he was sitting there swinging a bat with an aide, and there was a real life gun shoot, like OK Corral shootout. Right. It does. You know, it doesn't impact you no matter what you say because right. you can't feel it. But I, could, you know, I can tell you that at seven nineteen, Alexandria police responded to a call. Right. And mm-hmm. I have no idea what it feels like to be scared of by course. this. Right. And that's what we we just don't experience things in in person anymore. I read the eyewitness or the account of a guy who got shot and lived at the Pulse nightclub shooting, and it was the one of the worst things I've ever read because just the way he described it, like how he heard the the two hours that he was there like he got shot in the back and shielded himself under a couch and asked the police for help and they couldn't help him because they couldn't come in yet and he heard all the dead people's cell phones ringing and it was just like all of it really hit him you can't you can't 
you don't know what that we have feels no, yeah like. we have no concept of it and like that's the thing too is like people that are very anti-muslim like two what uh, two years ago there was a yemeni wedding and we authorized a drone strike while they were getting married and so, so you terrible. think pulse nightclub they go in with like a you know an okay. ISIS, a pledged isis member goes and shoots a bunch of homosexuals horrible imagine being there at your wedding last march we're sitting there at you know scottish right mm-hmm. and in comes a drone strike and we're all dead like exactly. there's an action, conceive it. Yeah, and there's nobody a movie that has cares. that. What movie is it? There's one of the one of the action movies has that. Hmm. Might be like London Has Fallen or something. Yeah. Oh, is well, White House Down? Maybe White House Down. Yeah. Like that. There, there was that's something like the you just can't conceive of that line. thing in yeah. our world. There yeah. was a, we're so cocooned from it. There was a video that I posted in the We Are Libertarians group, but I'm sure you can find it in uh, on YouTube. And uh, I didn't realize, I mean, YouTube, you it's like Wikipedia. You go down one of these rabbit holes oh and you God. get stuck forever. Next thing you know, you're listening to Alex Jones and Googling <laughs> Doppler technology. Yeah. Right. And then Megyn Kelly asks if you want to come on our show. <laughs> so, and this, and so I found um, actual rebels doing the rebel yell, people who are on video, videotape, excuse me, who had uh, fought in the Civil War, which led me to an eyewitness on a 50s TV show oh, talking about the uh, Lincoln assassination, assassination how Fort he Theater. was a boy, which led me to a, a wonderful voice recording of Joseph Hazelton, uh, who was an errand boy at Ford's Theater who knew John Wilkes Booth. And uh, the video is titled, Eyewitness to Lincoln's Assassination Tells of Booth's Escape. And it is this amazing recording of this guy telling the story of what the scene was like in Ford's Theater as Lincoln was assassinated. I've read that story a hundred times in my lifetime. We've heard it in history class. Seen the memorial. Yep. It was the Ford's Theater. It wasn't until this man told the eyewitness account of what it was like in that theater that I felt what the trauma of Lincoln's assassination was for the nation. Uh, I mean, it just was, it was a really powerful and gripping piece of audio that you should go and check out on YouTube. Oh, I mean, it's, it's incredible because the Lincoln trail or the train trail that he, like they brought his body across and he stayed the night at the state house, uh, here in Indianapolis. And it goes right through Irvington kind of, uh, North right. of us 40 and they, you know, just account after account, they're going through rural parts of the country and people are just out on their knees, like sobbing and can you imagine if President Trump got shot? <laughs> people would be there'd be Facebook statuses celebrating. It'd no, be there'd like, be there'd live people celebrating. It, 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 yeah. it would be it would be nine eleven in Palestine. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. It'd be cheers of you know vindication and you know God is great. But that's the difference. You know, it's just because we've become so not removed. Just we become desensitized for sure but then also we don't experience anything ever because even when we're at like even you go on vacation or even when you like are going and doing something right you can't wait to take a selfie because you you document the whole thing but you never paid attention the best vacation i ever took was when we went on a caribbean cruise and did not buy the internet package it was the best week of my life and i almost did not turn my phone back on right and you don't even care that you don't have pictures i mean or i mean or you have pictures you didn't care that you didn't have likes oh yeah i didn't care i didn't have likes i didn't care that my friends had no idea what i was doing or my mom didn't know like i just didn't care it was great it was freeing you just feel so like in the moment in the moment i felt very zen yeah well no i mean and then that's not like you know not having the you can't check the phone you can't check the likes like we need to do another selfie in front of this you know this cliff because the last one the lighting was shit and i don't want it as my cover photo well that may have happened all right but we can still use still petty. cameras <laughs> yeah, no you could it's, no, but i mean you couldn't like in, while yeah, you're standing there yeah, trying yeah, to go yeah. see the whales oh, we've only got 13 likes what the fuck yeah no <laughs> yeah i actually never do that but you delete you delete uh cool. photos that don't get enough likes cat no you post at better times no is that a fidget spinner no no, cool. no. It's a fidget it's a putty fidget putty it's a fidget putty basically yeah um, the the two of us are so ADD we can't yeah. uh, we have to play with our hands. Otherwise, so. I won't remember anything we talked about today. Yeah, <laughs> she will be nervous. They actually say though, as long uh, a lot of people that way, if it's indirect what you're listening to or processing information because you're busy doing that, you retain more. Yep, that's yeah. how I am. Well, and it's just tangent but it just annoys me how everyone is like i'm so add look at my fidget spinner like (laughs) you don't have adhd you just want to have the new 
cool toy and it actually makes you even worse. It's the nerd glasses for girls with no lenses. Exactly. You know, yeah. well, I'm such a dork. That's why I like and Spangle. And take a picture of the book. Right. And Spangle at the day job, he's got a fidget cube and I love that thing because it's just in your hand and you're just It's like listening. worry balls that have been around for like, you know, centuries. Like, right. like Buddhist worry balls that they, you know, it helps them get calm and like get still. I kind of want to be a Buddhist. So it looks like yeah. I'm having like a play How brave. Here, but <laughs> <laughs> so go read Siddhartha. You know, and this is a tangent or not tangent, but like, and it's not scientific at all, but I kind of feel like the prevalence of autism is a result of the flood of information mm-hmm. because autistic kids cannot it's just too much it's overwhelming and i feel like they intensely process information in a way that is almost a step forward in human evolution our people mm-hmm. well i mean it's like what are we flooded with information that's what overwhelms us causes us anxiety we have to learn how to manage and adjust to for them the sheer amount of information they're processing is way more than a regular individual and I think that could be very likely be a biological response to the amount of Im- the flood of information because like our eyes take in two billion of the twenty billion bits of information every second it takes in. Yeah, and they take in more and are more sensitive to um, the severity of it. They're not able to tune it out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like a podcast about libertarianism. <laughs> <laughs> Never ends. Uh, right. All right. So. Earlier this week, we had James Comey testify in front of the uh, House Senate Intelligence Committee, the Senate Intelligence Senate Committee, Intelligence, yeah, not the House which Senate, which is an oxymoron if I've ever heard one. Right, and uh, I, I we we reviewed the written statement and a lot of uh, our opinion of Comey and the entire situation. Uh, you you heard last week, so we won't we won't be bore you with the same details that we uh, posted in that last episode. Um, my impressions of Jim Comey are that I believed a lot of what he said. I believe that uh, he gave a lot of information that uh, seemed very credible. He seems like a very credible man. He's pissing off all sides of all parties. But I did not get the sense from his testimony that he did anything that was rising to the level of obstruction of justice. No. I mean, that's the way I feel as well. Inappropriate, yes, but illegal, no. And I'm sure you have a much stricter standard of it than I do. Uh, of course, especially with Donald Trump. Right. You know, and that's the thing is like, I mean, I feel like that's a pretty good gauge because yeah. you are no fan whatsoever and no. you're more libertarian, you know, you you'd take a more libertarian fr- like approach toward it. I And am, so you, if you don't feel like it, I think it's a real hard case to make. I'm a proponent when it comes to these sorts of issues of the truth and what I feel feel the truth is and uh i don't feel like donald trump i think he definitely i think there's a reason that jim comey walked away with the impression that he wanted that uh all of this to end he did of course he does but he could have just ordered him to end it you know there 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 were a lot of testimonies that that really the republicans i felt did a uh a good job of kind of fighting back the uh, the notion of obstruction of justice, like Marco Rubio, like Tom Cotton, James Tish, when he was saying, "Has anyone ever been prosecuted and indicted or impeached based on hope?" Rich, you know, rich. Yeah, a t t i s c h. I thought it was r i c s c h. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, from Idaho. Yeah, uh, Senator Rich, and um, so but he eliminated it completely. And with getting Comey to eliminate it, the news didn't cover that quote line of questioning. Yeah, and here's an Idaho senator of no importance, and he eviscerates the entire argument. Right. Hopes and hope and change doesn't result in an obstruction charge. Exactly, but I do think that it, there is definitely uh, Donald Trump definitely wants this to disappear, and uh, I, I I didn't I I definitely got the impression from the written testimony as I talked about last week that he he wanted um, he wanted the the main thrust was that he wanted it released that he was not being investigated. And that was more of the main. But I got the impression from the spoken testimony that he really wanted all of it to go away. Well, and you can't. It never ends. Right. This is a never-ending cloud of leaks and anonymous sources of and course. close White House officials who aren't willing to go on the record. Yeah. Like today, the new thing is that they've hired a money laundering expert into General Flynn. <laughs> and then a cybersecurity expert attorney to be able to validate that uh, – potentially anonymous transactions into accounts were General Flynn and the Russian government. Interesting. Uh, I walked away much more convinced that there is a a Russian plot, uh, so to speak, but I, I I don't think that it convinced me, A, first of all, 
The Russians can't hack the American election. No. Okay, they can't do it. Uh, they cannot break into voting machines, and they cannot change votes. That's they, what you think. That's what they want. They, you to they think. got in, but they changed. They can only change uh, like the first four characters of the address in the voter rolls exactly. in those eight states. Ah, that's funny. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it was the it was the like the if you lived on Main Street, they could change it to J T E N Street. But I, but I also I I mean if you watch the Megyn Kelly Vladimir Putin, uh, far be it for me to take Vladimir Putin's side. <laughs> um, this was Thank one of the first you. programs to say this guy's going to be uh, an awful uh, problem for us down the road. Uh, oh, yeah. I think it was around eight, episode eighty-seven. Uh, th- the the Russians are trying to interfere in our elections, just like we do in theirs. Just like we do in theirs. And Putin put the point is that who are you people to sit here and tell the rest of the world? That we are not to interfere in your elections when all you do is try and topple ours and control our elections. And uh, I, I found Putin's interview with Megyn Kelly, he made many, many good points that a lot of non-interventionists would agree with. In that, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at our our splinter while not looking at your plank right in the your eye you don't realize that this is all in retaliation as a prote- you know the best offense right. or the best defense is a good offense and so that's what they do is they try to intervene we try to intervene we know that like nelson rockefeller the whole reason that 4-h exists was to train young poor rural people in south america to not fall for marxism with shea and fidel castro they gave them land grants they propped up conservative dictators parceled land out gave it to them brought them here trained them at like uh like texas a m new mexico state then sent them back so that they could operate and run their own uh, property and not fall the lure to like uh we you know the man's keeping us down right you know we didn't paraguay venezuela the whole reason is because his oil fields were nationalized in venezuela and that's right. why he came up with the idea so wait real quick question why did the u.s like why does the u.s get involved in russian elections just because we can or they uh, well, to- one it's our intelligence agencies one so like the cia hacker base it came out in the lo- two WikiLeaks ago we trained them to use the exact digital footprint russian hackers use so our cia intrusions have the it's indistinguishable between a russian hack and a cia hack okay but nice. the reason we do is because vladimir putin is rising in power and this is a time when nationalism is rising as a whole Mm -hmm. usually everyone thought um like the extreme reactionary neo-nazi you know white pride was dead right it wasn't dead Mm -hmm. because eventually multiculturalism had a blowback people were tired of being told that the white man's to blame Mm -hmm. they were tired of being told that diversity is the be all end all Mm -hmm. and so in a society there was this organic response that's happening now and he is the perfect one to lead it because russians are the most nationalistic people on earth. Right. Mother Russia can do no wrong. And he's a real threat because oil was so high. Mm-hmm. Also, there's only one way to heat your home in Europe. There's only one supplier. It's the pipeline that runs through Turkey mm-hmm. that is the Russian. He can shut off the heat in Europe in the winter anytime he wants. Dang. And we also put nuclear weapons in Poland yep. throughout Eastern Europe and pointed them directly at the Russians and wondered why they wanted to put them in Cuba. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we have nuclear weapons pointed at them that can hit them at any second. And so he he can either succumb to it. And that's what had happened. Like Russia had fallen. The Soviet Union fell apart. Right. They tried a, a social experiment that didn't work. He, brilliant guy, so he's an economist by training. He put together his dissertation about how to create these um, like state uh, champions of statehood. And so mm-hmm. what it were, was was key industries when Russia was leaving socialism. He put up all like the oil industry, the Mm -hmm. finance, banking, all these things up for bid to the private sector. Right. But handpicked who got to bid on him. Picked all his friends. Right. That way he made them all rich. He was in charge. He was, because oil was so high, he was able to uh, raise the value of the Russian currency to the point where he implemented a basic income. So every, it's not like here where you go to the welfare office. Mm -hmm. It's what you make or if you don't make anything and you get a check. Mm-hmm. And, and universal I, basic income I mean, it's only a 13 percent income tax flat and the uh, standard of living is through the roof like he's been a hero to russia mm-hmm. that's yeah. why he keeps winning the only people that are anti that are are uh like there's like a youth resistance movement because they weren't born when he won in 1999 with george w bush and how bad it was right and they've got rampant drug problems and so he's cracked down on cultural things you know to keep mother russia strong and so the gay uh, community 
you know, the countercultural movement has resisted everything he's done because it looks like old fashioned backwoods he goes, ideas. He goes but it's and about lays, cultural preservation. Yeah, he goes and lays a wreath at Stalin's grave every year on his birthday. I mean, it's yeah, he even the, though he killed and Russians love <laughs> yeah. dictators. They don't care so much for democracy. Yeah, yeah the, like they have fistfights on the floor of their Senate. The, the, the Duma. The real reason. Kind of that, awesome. yeah, yeah, the real reason they hit that, each other. If you call them like a, a liar, they like <laughs> literally slug it out. It's yeah, kind of awesome. The real reason that Donald Trump scares so many Americans is that he is the first authoritarian, authoritarian type political figure to rise to the level that he's at, and that Andrew he, Jackson. But that wasn't in our lifetime. Sure, right. but well, like you know where. Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump are very similar in in the way that they lead and they will bullshit to maintain power. You know, we are okay with our as a society it seems that well not we are libertarians but we as a society seem to accept a certain amount of um uh, lying and bullshit because we feel it's on our behalf. Enough corruption We'll let you get away with some lying and corruption because we know you have our best interests. And that would require me paying attention, and I kind of like how things are going. Right. right. But Donald Trump, I feel, makes everybody freak out because Donald Trump is the first one where he's bullshitting for his own good and not the collective good. You know, even His a, people's good. Right. Mm -hmm. This is very much a racial thing. Right. This is about white European ideals of you know freedom and democracy. We know best... Your ideas of like cultural Marxism, where eliminating genders, uh, multiculturalism, being inclusive, not all you know the people that blow up buildings are bad. These were all ideas in Columbia University in the 1960s and 70s, and came over from uh, Frankfurt University. Right, like they brought a bunch of intellectuals in, and this is where all the revolution, like Tom Sowell, studied under these individuals in Harlem, and the idea was we're going to eliminate genders, we're going to eliminate the uh, social structure. They even right. proposed taking babies away from women so there isn't family loyalty which is mm -hmm. something they do in north korea it's literally in the giver the book. right and they, they try yeah. to undermine every yeah. societal institution to the point the state's all that's left yeah and so it was like marxism was forced on people they decided we we're going to do it reverse we're going to undermine and do it bottom up yeah and so people got tired of it they got tired of being told the white person's keeping you down or you're to blame you're the reason for your you know if you if you white cis males weren't so stupid, even even Thaddeus Russell, who is a libertarian uh, historian, uh, somebody that I like a lot, was on Rogan basically in a roundabout way saying that gender is just a false construct of society. I, I mean, I can I can buy his argument that race is a false construct of society. There's only one race because there we're just human beings, yeah. and some of us just have more melanin than others. And the but the idea where it was like biologically they have there boobs. are actual differences. <laughs> it's right. like, it is at the atomic <laughs> level. It, it is DNA exactly right. st structure. You can't no. You can't identify away a Y chromosome. Right. You know. No. Like, there's like, no removing there's, that with surgery. No. Like they're just. You can chop just a dick things. off of me, but you can't take a Y chromosome out. Yeah. So, no. So no. Greg, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So I need a little more autism. So um. These He's fully woke. <laughs> fully woke. No, but so just for whatever. Ma okay, so the people I go to school with who are like the ones throwing parties that the Congress people got shot at and mm -hmm. all of this stuff, and they're for charity though. So don't for charity, us. right, right. And they're you know s hardcore socialist. What is it, Marxists? Yeah, they're they're, you, they're good. usually you're a Marxist, but they'll they'll consider themselves basically just a leftist and anti-fascist. Okay, um, and they a Marxist socialist or a welfare liberal. Okay, a progressive. And they see and all they do is post about how much they hate you know republicans and democrats and they hate it so much and how um police officers and um politicians are just as bad as like hitlers and the right. army is just like they go they go to the career immediate fair. extreme right and they go to the career fair at ball state and they hand out um like right by the army like the students ROTC for a democratic stuff. society right but right by the rotc table they hand out pamphlets saying like do you want to become a killer like yeah wanna, right so why are they like if it doesn't work if the people of the Soviet Union, right, got oh, no, tired of it? But it's, that no one, the right people haven't. It's so, right. like, so it's why about are they perfecting society. So, like, the idea is that there are these social planners who know best, elites. Okay. And this goes, like, all the way back to Plato's Republic, and that we will breed this class of elites who are the governing class. They'll know best for you stupid people. They'll make the decisions. We'll get rid of poverty. We'll get rid of um, war. 
all these it's it's with originally good intentions right if you just give us the amount of control we need in order to do it we'll get the right people there right the problem is there are these there aren't any mythical bureaucrats i mean have you ever met anyone you're like god i'd just willingly give over everything because they know best no it's it's a false idea (laughs) what ends up happening (laughs) i mean yes outside the realm of libertarianism Dear leader. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, so the, like, like, that's the thing with Bernie. Bernie rails against corruption and wants justice. He wants a fair playing field for everybody. All good, well intended things. The point is, the government's the institution that allows for the corruption. That's yeah. the actual, the actual structure that allows for things to become corrupt because people, when given the opportunity to exploit something for personal gain, are going to, regardless of how pure they are. Not yeah. everybody's Jesus Christ. You know, they have a career. They need to provide for a family. Mm-hmm. So they're going to take beyond the take. So these people have the right intentions. They just can't trying to solve. They're, they're trying to solve the problems government creates with more government. Tom, it's like trying to fix cancer with more cancer. And Tom, do you think sorry, Tom Woods had on uh, there's a guy, a podcaster that I really love this podcast. It's called the Eastern Border. And uh, the podcast on Tom Woods was called a gallop through Soviet history. And, uh, and and they were breaking down some of the arguments. And inevitably, you always, in, you get into an argument with one of these people. It's, well, communism in the Soviet Union wasn't actual communism. They, it was imperfect. It was corrupted. But if, if it had been Bernie, it would have been, if or we could, Trotsky had been the one that won. Exactly right. There's always a caveat. And it always is going to come down with these people to, really, if I were in charge, like, it, it, it's it's a very uh, selfish thing. Oh, it's complete. Central it's, planning, I yeah. know best for everybody. And that's, right. it's funny, like, all of Western civilization comes down to that. I mean, the battle of Plato and Aristotle, Plato's best student. Aristotle said, you're right, in your republic, if centralized control in the theoretical realm, that could be the perfect society. Mm-hmm. That's why Aristotle said, I only, the A is A. I can only experience what I my life is. And that's why you have to decentralize everything and have give power to the people rather than some elite governing. Not that you'll have a better outcome, but that because it's the safer bet against tyranny. Right. And that's been the argument of all of Western civilization since. Mm -hmm. So do you think these people, because like I said, it's just in an alarming rate, they're joining this movement. Do you think they'll change? 10 15 years I yeah they'll moderate and Facebook. like i have you know they'll definitely as they have to actually earn money and they can't just go around you know like because bernie sanders really is like this guy was like a gypsy drifter got a, a job in government got elected mayor at 40 he yeah. was a nobody he was Nothing, a loser he was a total loser to basement 40. dwelling mouth breather i right. kind of love bernie sanders not gonna lie. i mean you no know, his appeal is right all yeah. of his intentions are good the problem is he's trying to fix cancer with more cancer. Yeah. No, not, I agree. But then, and also we live in a democracy. There's transition, regime change. If he, it were constant and he were the one white knight willing to watch over everything, maybe, you know what, maybe he would do it. Right. But at the end of the day, he has to rely on such a big bureaucracy with people he doesn't know who don't have a vested interest in him staying in office that they're going to go after and take it care of me. But I still kind of love him. E- even somebody yeah, like his intentions are pure. He's even, an honest. I, I love that about him. He's great. So you have Lenin. Lenin takes over, uh, and then you have a war between Trotsky and Stalin. Stalin. And Stalin was uh, not as charismatic of a speaker. Uh, he and and he was in charge of the secret police. You had uh, Trotsky, who was in charge of the Red Army. He was the philosophical f- philosophical leader. backbone. He was this charismatic speaker. I mean, people to this day still say that they're Trotskyist, right. or like you know, Trotskyism rather than Marxism, because he expounded upon it. Right. So, but then the problem is you've got crafty people like Stalin who make themselves the secretary general of the party, and they start. He starts. He he runs the machinery of the party. He's the operator. He starts putting people into the party, the into the controlling of the Soviet Union, that uh, are loyal to him. He gives them the jobs. He's the bureaucratic guy that makes sure that everybody goes in certain places. And Trotsky is so busy being esoteric and being the thought Ivory leader Tower. that he doesn't realize that he's not getting invited to meetings, that his people aren't getting invited to meetings until finally Lenin dies and he is not told about when and where services are and he's not there. And then all of a sudden, Stalin is anointed the leader of the Soviet Union. And, and then he hires the, you know, sends the KGB to Mexico City and puts a uh, uh, axe in Trotsky's head. Right. I mean, and so, so you the... 
the, the a lot of what your college age friends believe are just fairy tales. They're things that are not based in the real human existence. They're not based in how the human animal works. They're and not, idealism can only be moderated with experience. Exactly right. And so it's just going to take time. I'm not worried about these kids. They'll figure it out. But like when they say things like healthcare is a is a, a right, they're saying that they would that because of that. They could. They would walk to a doctor's home, put a gun to his head, and say, "Go fix them for free." Right. Mm -hmm. That's the implication, and so that's yeah. ridiculous. Because then they're going to be like, "Well, no, but I don't. You know, I'm not. I'm not pacifist. Mm -hmm. Kumbaya, right. let's hand out flowers." Right. But you want somebody else with a gun to do it for right. you. Right. It's it's easier when it's right. not you. Yeah. It's less feels that way. So let's circle back to the Comey testimony. Uh, so Comey Comey testified. What were your impressions, Greg? Oh, I, I think he's Alan Dulles. Okay. I think it was perfectly scripted in order to do create a media to create the exact sound bites the media needed to continue selling. I think that it, I very much think that the deep state is it's Nixon all over again. Alan Alan Dulles was the former fired head of the CIA, by JFK. fired by JFK, and then all of a sudden JFK dies. Yeah, and the Dulles brothers used you know I don't know that I don't think they're going to kill anybody, but I do think that they are going to continue these leaks and the, its coordination with the press because the press respects the people in the intelligence community. They've spent years developing these trustworthy relationships right. with the sources. They're just going to keep anything they feed them. Yep. Even though you have a Senate testimony, which is basically just theatrics, mm -hmm. saying specifically. Did he obstruct, you know, based upon your experience as an FBI director, can you think of a single case where someone was charged and convicted of obstruction with justice based on hope? Yeah, I, I as somebody who is fair minded and doesn't have a dog in the fight whatsoever, I watched the complete testimony and I felt that there was it didn't rise. If the level is reasonable doubt, I felt there was some reasonable doubt that there. I mean, I just wouldn't convict Donald Trump of obstruction of justice. I don't know. Based that on you that can testimony take alone. I really hope you can see your way to letting this go. I don't know what governing body gets to decide what that was meant, right? And put someone and impeach someone based upon that. Well, it depends on what your definition of is is. <laughs> but we all, is is a racist term, and I won't allow you to use it. We all know that none of this has anything to do with the truth or justice. It has everything to do with politics. Yeah, and, it's art. It's art. And, yeah. you know, theater. Uh, speaking of theater. It, I, I watched a lot of the Jeff Sessions testimony. I never really had seen much out of Sessions, and uh, he's a <laughs> slow, good old boy. And, uh, Kamala Harris was like, stop rushing me. You're rushing me. I don't like to be rushed. I get nervous. <laughs> People forget he was a Democrat. Or, yeah. He was one of the flipping uh, Democrat that flipped with the Reagan revolution. Right. And you so, know, Like Rick Perry. Uh, Kamala Harris is being, uh, oh, well, it's just sexism that people are criticizing. No, oh, everyone said, look at how they talk to her. Right. Is she the new face of the Democratic no. Party? Meanwhile, she was incredibly disrespectful according to Senate rules, and and that's why she was told to It's like Elizabeth to Choctaw Warren, and right. all of the Democrats exempt themselves from the norms and procedures, and then there's outrage that they weren't treated right. Do uh, Jeff Sessions... His memory is worse than the potheads he's trying to crack down on. I mean, it's it's all very strategic, and he's just doing it to, you know, well, I can't recall, so he can't get pinned on anything. I felt he was very slippery. Um, but but I, you I, have the right to not incriminate yourself. Of course. But I also enjoyed um, uh, he, him yelling at Ron Wyden, and when he got mad, his cute little face just got all red, and he was like, stop it, stop it. <laughs> um, but Ron Wyden, somebody that uh, on civil liberties issues is great, but... Ron Wyden is the, he is very, um, you know, he is good on civil liberties, but he very much has higher aspirations. And so because mm. of that, he's starting to get toe the line a little bit more. Ron Wyden could never be president if he wanted to no, be. No, but he like, wants to be like labor secretary or head of NSA or something like uh, that okay. in a democratic administration. Got it. Uh, Basically be what Dan Coates is. Yeah, the deep state would assassinate him before they'd ever let him be. Correct. Uh, Ron Wyden's great on, on the NSA and deep state stuff. But, uh, yeah, Jeff Sessions, I felt, was very slippery. I didn't feel like he... I felt like he was just trying to clear his name, but he, he just... It didn't seem it seemed to make sense why he was really there. Oh, no, he sent Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, out before to answer all the questions on Russia. Right. You know, and he's the one who appointed Richard Mueller, or Robert Mueller, and right. he's running the special investigation. And Rosenstein is a Democrat. You know, he has connections to the Clinton administration, but... He's about as honest as you're going to find in D.C. I was I, I will be amazed if they don't at least try to bring Sessions back to testify again and force him under the threat of uh, not obstruction, but just contempt 
because he invented this uh, policy, long-standing policy of the Justice Department on the spot, basically saying, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to invoke Violate exe executive privilege. Executive privilege. Well, the president's the one who declares executive privilege. You can't declare executive privilege on his behalf <laughs> if you're the attorney general. Unless he had advised you of that, because that is established law Absolutely. by a Supreme Court ruling. So if he has said this is where I would, you know, if, if President Trump said this is where you need to be careful because these are the areas I may invoke executive privilege yeah. should I ever have to testify. Yeah. yeah. So it it I, I will be surprised if he doesn't come back. Surprising news out of the last few days is that Robert Mueller is starting to man. These special prosecutors always grow tentacles. If you remember, Kenneth Starr was appointed to investigate Whitewater and ended up, you know, prosecuting on uh, Monica Lewinsky and perjury and possible obstruction. And now they're they're. Uh, expanding the scope and now including the president to be investigated under obstruction of justice charges in addition to michael flynn carter page and others for ties to just russia after he cleared his name all of a sudden the investigation extends to the white exactly house exactly right How and, convenient. So, and so uh, I, I wonder what comey said to mueller privately uh that that helped him uh come he gave to this me conclusion. two winks of double secret you know innuendo and mike pence has retained private counsel uh, as these investigations start to expand. But we're all going to be constitutional lawyers coming very soon. Uh, every Facebook friend of yours is going to know constitutional law in and out. The so Russian puppet. To, right. So look forward to that. I loved it. Vladimir report. Putin came out today and offered full Clement, or um, uh, the same thing he offered Snowden took james comey ha. That's funny. And I thought that was the best troll ha. i've ever seen he offered you know full safe passage uh, uh showtime has a special interview oliver stone like, the putin tapes but yeah Mo uh, <laughs> oliver stone is sitting down doing these long form interviews with putin i'll be interested to see that oh, they're wonderful the first one is outstanding is it i mean he is playing chess i've always said it. he plays chess and everybody else plays checkers he's playing 8d intergalactic chess it's, while everybody else is playing someone called it now trumps at 32d <laughs> acrobatic backgammon <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is the greatest description I've ever heard. Uh, but Robert Mueller, uh, let's talk about the teams that are being formed. You want to uh, talk, talk about that? I think just we'll wrap up, wrap with, up this. with this. Yeah, because the team that Robert Mueller is starting to put together is very impressive. Are you? Are you I think, leaving? I think Hannah's just walking out of the podcast. She's Hold on, done. we need to do our picture for the promotion. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll wait a few minutes. Just, yeah, we're, we're wrapping like, up. Like five minutes. Basically, so. the gist of it is this guy's <laughs> is assembling a legislative team of seasoned experts. One has Dream and has uh, argued over 100 Supreme Court, Supreme Court cases. One has, was a special aide on White or, uh, Watergate. I mean, these are the who's who, for, I mean, led by a former FBI director. Jeannie Ree, a former senior advisor to Eric Holder, white-collar criminal crime specialist. A cybersecurity expert. Aaron like, Zebley. These are, this, is the, this is the A-team of special prosecution attorneys. And Trump's loading up with a bunch. One guy that's kind of a Wall Street attorney that's his hit lead. Then he's brought in someone from a Christian, a, a, an alternative to the... Um, Southern Law and Poverty like Center, but like a white Christian version. Southern Law and Poverty Center, but like a white Christian version. Yeah. And then uh, four major firms have all declined to um, participate. Jay Sekulow is somebody that you've probably seen if you've ever ventured into the right media. The uh, American Center for Law and Justice yeah. was always kind of the conservative Christian answer to the ACLU. Yeah. And he's considered by a lot of people to be a clown. He's the Pat Buchanan version of Andrew Dimpolitano. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly right. So we'll put all this in the show notes. We got a lot of really good show notes. Uh, we got we didn't even get to a lot, but we'll get to that in later episodes because we've tired. We're, we're all tired. We're tired. We got. I'm clean leaving. Up. So. <laughs> Final thoughts for this episode, Baby and Agnos. Oh, don't call me that. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, good episode. I felt like I contributed a lot. You did really well. Finally, you did really well. Thanks. Something I know a lot about. Yeah, well, crying liberals. Crying liberals, right? No, I uh, <laughs> that aren't even people. That aren't even people. No, yeah, learned a lot. I thought it was a good discussion. I'm definitely going to once it's posted. I'm going to send it to a lot of my liberal friends nice. <laughs> to your snowflake network drop it there just to troll a little bit i no. think you're all humans though and i care each of yeah. i love you all i love you all the same but uh yeah <laughs> shameless plug follow me on twitter and instagram and snapchat at cat anagnos are you getting a lot of creepers a lot of creepertarians no a lot of actually really nice people follow me and interact with my stuff which is what i like 
Like I said, I don't care about the likes. I like about the comments. I like the funny discussions. Yeah. I like people seeing that I have intelligent friends that I get to talk to instead of <laughs> people we, just calling me ugly on the she, internet. She <laughs> just, she wants to show off people. Yeah, I just want to show off. No, uh, but yeah, great discussion. I really like this episode. Probably my favorite so far. Hannah? Um, yeah, it was a good episode too. I think the thing that I've thought about the most is we've had these discussions about uh, making differences and changing and how we're like the world is screwed up is the line from one of my favorite Michael Jackson Jackson songs, If You Want to Make the World a Better Place, take a look at yourself and make the change. It's true. You've been struck. Ah. It's true. Wrong song. So, oh, shit. Yeah. Really? You did smooth it's still camera. Michael Jackson, <laughs> but... Anyways, but it's true though. Like, <laughs> if you're gonna make the difference, like you have to change first. Right, so. it's an individual change. It has to happen and yep. scale out. It's yep. a foundational yep. principle of lib- uh, of libertarianism and in individualism. Michael Jackson was a secret libertarian. You've got to. You, <laughs> he was from Gary. You, so. hey, I'll talk about toxic associations. <laughs> you've got to act. Heart MJ. You've yeah. got to act in good faith for others to act in good faith yep. with you. Yep. So. Gregory. Uh, seven o'clock Sunday night. Alex Jones on Megyn Kelly on yes. NBC. Prepared to get woke, America. This is this is the time he's arriving on the grand stage. It's his cotillion. He's coming out to society, and I can't wait to see it. I I I don't think that it will ever happen. I think he will get canceled. He wants it canceled because he said that she was just going to do a profile of him, not of Sandy Hook and his extremist views. Right, and he thinks that the promo she's using was false, you know, misleading. I, so I he even news. wants it pulled. Glenn Beck basically nailed it the other day where he was just like, and, and they don't get along, uh, where he was basically... Who gets along with Glenn Beck? Who gets along with Alex Jones. Oh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> 90 million weekly downloads. <laughs> <laughs> but... How you doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Isn't that great? Uh-huh. Basically, like, uh, and, and I just don't, I don't understand when people go, we need to shut this guy down, we need to turn, we need to, like, nah. why? He's like, very entertaining. <laughs> let him, let him discredit himself. If anybody listens to him, you realize, like, this person is crazy. He's a crazy person. He's We're entertaining as hell. around a lot. Um, well, I, he's not entertaining to the parents of Sandy Hook. Okay. Get over it. I, listen, and no one's I'm, ever read his actual criticisms. His criticisms right. are fact based. Like, you know, why, for instance, are there, does the FBI's report on Newton, Connecticut show no deaths in that year? Right. Zero. Weird. Filed government report. Right. So, like, they don't go through and address the actual criticism. So, like, you can't dismiss him outright. The guy can quote uniform commercial code from memory and recite it down to, like, the subsection. He's incredible. Sure. His his basic premises are always off. I mean, yeah. in my opinion, but he is uh, definitely somebody that is influential in the world, and has a lot of people listening to him. Why wouldn't you want to understand what that guy has to say? You don't need to be afraid of it and try to shut it down. Expose right. yourself to it and decide he's wrong. Well, the mothers of Sandy Hook are. Uh, you know what? The mothers of Sandy Hook need to realize they live in a free society, and that means that there are going to be people in the world that are abhorrent. And I'm sorry for your loss, but we're not going to tailor our entire society. To people who suffered a tragedy, you know, it's just uh, the the lowest common denominator either. So, yep. uh, not that they are. I'm just saying in general we do that. Your outrage is not our problem. Mittens, what do you think of this episode? After you destroyed it, yeah. she's not she's not impressed. She says the best part of it was when she destroyed the podcast. <laughs> so Cats I want to watch terrible. that footage. Can we make that like a little short oh, video? Oh, I'm going to. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's like King Kong and of put podcasting. it in slow mo. Yeah. Just the yeah. foam yeah. going everywhere. <laughs> Good job, kid. All right, thank you for joining us here on this episode of We Are Libertarians. We love you all for supporting us. Uh, You guys, it costs a lot of money to run We Are Libertarians as we're starting to grow and as we're starting to try and do more things. Uh, We're going to start adding live streaming soon. Uh, And we're doing that stuff because you guys donate money to help us grow, to help us add stuff, to help us bring in new libertarians to the movement. And uh, you guys are just so great to us, and we can't thank everyone who listens, who downloads, who shares this on Facebook enough. And especially to the people who donate on PayPal or Patreon, you guys are all stars. Thank you, uh, especially to two people, Bitcoin. Christy Avery and Jason Doolittle. Both have uh, have donated a lot in the last uh, year, but especially in the last couple months to help us. You are our sugar daddies. Finish, a fi- yeah, exactly. <laughs> For real, our podcast fin- sugar daddies. Finish some things out, and I just want to say thank you to them especially uh, because the increased capabilities that we're going to have. 
Uh, it, You're going to get levels it, of autism you've never uh, seen before. In high definition, bitches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so please. Remind me never to go back. So right. check in. Uh, I, I warned you, and you showed up looking like that. So oh. I want to thank them especially. And if you are a Wall fan and you see Jason Doolittle, if you see Christy Avery online, make sure that you thank them because they are uh, so awesome and, 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 and such a great part of We Are Libertarians and our growth. And also, please check out the YouTube channel. I've spent a lot of time trying to get a, all of our episodes up there. If you listen to podcasts on YouTube, you're one of those people. Then all of our episodes are now up there, and uh, you can share those with your friends. Thank you for joining us on this episode of We Are Libertarians. We will see you next week. And as always, we promise to do better next time. <laughs>